Hi, I'm Ray. And I'm Veronica. And welcome to the Chick Lit Book Club podcast. Where we read a romance novel and then we talk about it. Today we're talking about The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn. <sighs> Swoon. Swoon. Mm-hmm. Swoon. Mm-hmm. Swoon Town. Swoon Town. Yes. Heavily into Swoon Town. Like firmly rooted in Swoon Town. Anthony Bridgerton. Oh, God. Reformed Anthony. Rake. You know how I feel about that fucking trope. Oh, my God. I know. It's it's all rooted in, like, people saying that the boys were mean to me because they had crushes on me. Please stop fucking saying that to girls. Mm-hmm. Stop it forever. But, you know, oh, I mean, we'll get into it with him. But, I mean, with him, oh, God, him and, and Kate. Just, oh, my God. They're, so, like, I adore them so much. I, I know. You had read this book before, but I had not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. good. Like, chef's kiss good. Yeah. Ugh. Mm-hmm. Banter, banter, banter. Holy Boy. shit. Boy. God. So <gasps> awesome. So good. I cannot wait. I mean, you know, spoiler alerts, but like. Right. I think we liked wait. it. <laughs> I think we liked it. I think we did. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Especially mm-hmm. since, like, it's one of my favorites. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Yeah. I, just, I would read this again. I remember I asking you this week, did you get to the B part? Did you get to the B part? Uh-huh. <laughs> Literally on her boob. Mouth on her boob. Mouth on her boob. I'm excited to see how they do that in the show. Oh, my God. Well, fucking Jonathan Bailey putting his mouth anywhere close to somebody's boob, I'm okay with. I'm really okay with. Jonathan Bailey's mouth anywhere near, like, my body. skin or my body. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 It could it, it could be my ankle, and I'd be like, okay. I mean, again, he's not going really to do hot. that. Yeah, but no, he won't. Great. We are not his type. We are not his cup of tea. We are not. Mm-mm. Which he has with just milk and no sugar. Thank Correct. You. Mm-hmm. Oh my dear, it's been a week, man. It's been a couple weeks. It, yeah, it really has been. Um, you and I are recording later than usual, um, mm-hmm. because. Uh, Mainly, like, I had to read, well, I was traveling for work, but I also had to read an ARC that uh, we'll mm-hmm. talk about later. It comes out the 22nd, March 22nd. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I was, like, blowing through that book. Um, but it was, like, you know, almost 500 pages. And I <laughs> texted you. It was like, I will not be prepared to, <laughs> I will not be done with my count. It's, we it's okay, because I had a couple arcs to read, so I did those yeah. while, you know. Yeah. And then then was up way too late rereading this book last night. Worth it. Totally worth it. Ugh. Worth it. Worth it. Oh, my oh, dear. Lord. Yes. Veronica. Of course, he's younger than us. I was just looking him up. He's 5'11". No, he's not. No, he's it not. That's 5'11". Uh, no, false. Nope. There's just no way. I am 5'10", and there's no way he is taller than me. There's no way on God's green earth. It does feel like he's shorter than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, if it is an IMDb, because they're a liar. Yeah, it is IMDb. Yeah, yeah, they're a liar. All right, hang on, girl. I will look elsewhere. Look and see how tall Tom Cruise is on there. Fucking hell. Fuck that dude. Can't oh, I'm just saying, because we all know he's, like, at the, t- the size of, like, a, you know, What is he, like, 5'6 or something? Oh, We shouldn't just... make fun of him for something he cannot help no i'm gonna make fun of him for the silent top scientology oh and, sure yeah we can know. make fun of him for plenty of other reasons right right although i have i have read that he is he is a good person he just likes scientology i mean there's that i don't i i think that's debatable um it's i'm seeing 511 everywhere Oh, I mean, but I'm also seeing 510. Hang on. I just saw a thing that says 510. Mm-hmm, so. mm-hmm. It starts going down. I'm telling yep, you. Those yep. are Tinder rules right there. Those are Tinder, Tinder rules. rules. <laughs> if it's 510, he's really five, probably seven. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, TikTok has uh, educated me on, on man measurements mm-hmm. and how inaccurate they are. Yeah. I mean, penis and height. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Oh, my dear. Yeah. Tell me something good. <laughs> um, well, I have a personal one and then a show one. So, okay. personal one, my dog finally doesn't have a fucking cone on anymore. <laughs> she had hernia surgery two Aww. weeks ago. Oh, uh, and has had a cone on ever since. And when I was out of town last week, 
that adorable asshole cracked her cone off of her head. So my poor husband was stuck here <laughs> with our kid and our dog who hulked the cone off of her fucking head. And then yeeted it into space. Just fucking like, yeeted it across the room. Mark! <laughs> I guess he was like it hadn't fully come off of her yet and he was trying to like duct tape it to keep it from like <laughs> falling off of her. Like a guy. Like a guy. <laughs> how else are you gonna I mean, it was cracked. It's plastic and it cracked. Like how yeah. else are, and they had actually put duct tape around the edge of it to keep it from like splintering because she kept ramming it into things. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> So as he was trying to, like, fix it, she, like, hulked the rest of the way out of it. <laughs> and he sent me this picture of, like, in the foreground of the photo is, like, him holding. It was just, like, his hand holding the cone. And in the background, it was her <laughs> with her tongue, like, lolling out of her mouth. <laughs> she looked so fucking proud of herself. <laughs> she could have given you the paw and oh, two at the if same she, time if she oh. were able like dexterity wise able to oh give me the God. finger she would have oh. so then he had to take her to the vet the next day because like she was only a week out of that surgery mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you how are you gonna make her not so i I had told him like put the shirt back on her because we had like had this shirt on her to keep her from messing with the hernia before surgery so he did that. <laughs> i don't even know how we got it on her because it took two people <laughs> Oh, God. Before. Me wearing oven mitts. <laughs> <laughs> That's a spicy meatball. It's so fucking terrible. So he got the shirt on her, and then the next morning took her back to the vet, and they put another one on her. But this one was, like, adjustable, oh, so uh-huh. that, like, if, at least if it fell off, we could put it back on. Don't mm-hmm. worry, that mm-hmm. motherfucker fell off every single day. <laughs> we had to keep putting it back on. Um, if anyone out there... Pro tip. Uh, we have learned. Now, our dog apparently likes bread. Cool. Who doesn't? Totally get oh, it. I, most dogs like bread. Yeah. Delicious. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I mean, who doesn't? Yeah, who doesn't, like you say, who doesn't like bread? Who doesn't bread, fucking right? like bread? I don't right. trust you if you don't like bread. Like, maybe you right. don't eat it because it doesn't make you feel good or whatever, whatever other reason. But, like, right. you still like bread, right? Right. So, anyway. Um, pro tip. It takes two people. Have one person... Hold the bread. Now, hold the bread. Do not let go of the bread. Hold it and let the dog nibble it. Try to get it out of your hand, okay? Right. Whilst the other person puts the cone on. And then the dog <laughs> is distracted by the bread, which, you know, in dog terms, is a high-value treat, okay? Oh so, like... Yeah. My husband would hold, Mr. Veronica would hold the bread, and I, because apparently I am her, like, what, I called it something, I forget what it was, like, her um, emotional support human, I would put the cone around her neck, and then would just speak in soft tones, and Mm -hmm. be like, see, I knew you could do it, such a good girl, and I would, like, snap it into place. Yeah. Nice. And then she would finish her bread. So just pro fucking tip. I mean, um, you know, I would suggest possibly as a hot dog bun because then it's like there's like ooh, there's that area. is a good idea. There's yeah, area. Yeah, yeah. That's a great idea because then you actually like it's it's you could hold it too. It's like it's a yeah. handle. It's, it's like its more handle. right. Like there's it's heartier than like a piece of bread. Mm-hmm. That is an excellent idea. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So there you go. Today, as of today, she had her uh, official surgical post-op appointment nice. they were like well she can resume normal activity and i was like thank fuck because this dog needs some activity <laughs> because she hasn't been allowed yeah. to run around yeah well you know i would i would recommend as i mentioned to you i wish i had had i would have let you borrow it is um mm-hmm. for my corgi uh like newton um mm-hmm. i had um <clears throat> i had one of those like inflatable collars we used to call it <laughs> sid's elizabethan collar yep. she was like fucking lady whistle down man she, yeah, she was <laughs> and she and she, that worked for her now i tr- think i tried that on lunestra and lunestra was having none fucking AstraZeneca. of it <laughs> astrazeneca was not <laughs> lunestra <laughs> lunar eclipse was <laughs> 
who's not having fucking any of it. Uh-uh. And uh, that's when I finally got her the onesie and I just like threw her in that, her ass in that. I was like, done. Uh huh. Yeah. Not as funny as fucking Bucky Barnes and his with the shorts. Pants. Yep, with those the shorts were with his, fucking t- hysterical. his tail sticking out. How yes. did he like pee though? Was there like a hole? I would take him off when he went outside. Okay. Yeah. How'd you no, get him I, back on? I would force him back on him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you find that by yourself. You force. <laughs> you force yeah. things if you have to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Except for baths. We don't do baths in this house. I, I pay for someone to bathe them. Because I, I, told, I might have told this. I'm pretty sure I told this story on the, on air before. But, like, taking him to PetSmart and letting him. Like, they, they bathed him. They fermented him. And they, <laughs> and they gave me, like, the, here's how your dog did. Or here's how your pet did. And it was like, he sang a lot for us today. <laughs> and <laughs> the one girl, the first time we took her, I go, so was he good? She goes, like, oh, he was. Oh, yeah, he's so sweet. And I was like. Did, You're not talking not, about my dog, are you? I was like, I, at first I was like, wait, Bucky Barnes, right? And then he, she's like, <laughs> Bucky you know, Sebastian FYI. Barnes. Is that uh, Bucky S. Barnes, right? Yeah. Right? Oh, no. Every person that talks about him must use his full name. Um, and she's Thank like, God. oh, yeah, he's so sweet. I go, wait, did he make any noise? She's like, oh, no, he screamed the whole time. He sang the whole time. <laughs> and she goes, at one point, he's leaning on the table and she's demonstrating as he's screaming at the same time. I'm like, okay, cool. He's an asshole. It's fine. Don't worry about it. So, you know, no, there's things where I'm like, no, I'm not going to force this. Because I spit my wine everywhere. <laughs> I, I mean, I would demonstrate for you. He was like this and like, bah! he also <laughs> screams like a howler monkey. In fact, it, it's been wet. And so I brought them in to like watch their paws. Oh my god! Oh, and it's like I'm murdering him as I'm trying to wipe his paws. He's like, Aah! I'm like, oh my god, because he's doing it right by the door, so all my neighbors can hear this dog, which sounds like I'm stabbing him. I'm like, <laughs> the I'm cam like, girl is stabbing that dog. <laughs> Is she getting paid to do that? Who's asking this woman for that? that? Who gets off on that? Uh, A lot of people. A lot lot of people. people. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay, so then my my show one Mm -hmm. is that um, in the past, the way that, like, Anchor measures months and whatnot is not like month it's not like one to 30 or 31 it's like yeah middle of the month to middle of the month regardless anyway we had our best month ever Yay! this past month like month ending i think it's like march 18th or whatever mm-hmm. so you know just thank you to all of the listeners Yay. because we were getting really close and i was like i mean i won't be disappointed but like it's getting so close, like I just wanted to get there, mm-hmm. um, and we did, and we surpassed it. So that was really exciting, and thank that you to exciting. everyone. Yes, yes. Um, Ray. Yeah, yeah. Tell me something good. Mm. <laughs> so I made you go first because I was maybe I'll think of something in the time that I should have just given you the show one. Oh, I know. I got a fucking shirt on, guys. Look at the shirt you're wearing. Fuck yes. So our merch is fucking up. Um, I will get it in on the website, but our, th- our Threadless store is up and running. So Ooh, we should put that in our show notes. Yes. Um, I will put it on the website. I figured out how to do it for B3, so I will I will put it on for us. Fuck yes. Um, and um, so we have a shirt and we have a sticker <laughs> a magnet that I don't know if, <laughs> if Veronica's too excited about, but... Did I not see it? Yeah, it was the one where it was like, how do we end this thing? Oh, In the yes. most annoying mm-hmm. way possible. It's yes. the best thing ever. Who's okay. not? A, who's? It's amazing. Okay. <laughs> um, I just want, I wanted to get us, uh, I, I need to get our other magnets up there to, you, you can just buy what you want. Mm-hmm. You can put, you can put on a fucking tote bag if you want. You can put it on whatever you want. You want to put it's, on a shower curtain? I have one curtain? in my car. Yeah. You want to put on a shower curtain? Go the fuck on. I mean. Last week, my car sat at the airport for about. Mm, 38 hours so, so anyone who walked by my car <laughs> that's why we had them <laughs> I know <laughs> well, <laughs> well now I can wear this to the gym like I wear the B3 shirt to the gym <laughs> yep so yep I love yep. that shirt it turned out really well I love it yes. I love it so much ah! so yeah that's my bright spot so I'm very related. excited I'm really glad mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That's a pretty mm-hmm. good bright spot. Do you know what I have? What? Do you have cards there? I have a fucking deck, deck, of, deck of cards. Yes. I um, a deck you, of cards. <laughs> um, I, I did hear that Boston accent. Yeah. I heard it in real life and just now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm picking a card and hopefully it's not fucking oral sex. Hopefully? Because that's boring. Wow. I mean, it's, I not boring. it's not boring. In real life, I would okay. be fine with Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> this is a three out of five and it's called <laughs> Kneeling Disciple. Okay. Okay. <laughs> a great position for deep penetration. He should make sure he is fully aroused before entering her vagina. He kneels and she raises one of her legs over his shoulder, pressing her pelvis against his groin while he thrusts. Wow. Okay. Oh, Hang oh, on. Oh, go that way. Oh, all right. It's only wow. one leg, though. So I don't know what happens with the Where's other. Where's the other leg? Wait, turn it around again. It, it does. There's no. There's none there. So I guess I have to draw one on. Yeah, you have to draw one on. Let you me, know what I find fascinating, pen. though. Like he. So her pelvis is like in her back or off the surface, whatever the surface is. Yeah. And her yeah. arm is still back. Like she's off the ground. Why don't we just draw it so that it's like yeah. back up this way over her shoulder? Like this is a great picture of a leg. Why don't we just oh, we color it in so you can see it? And uh, there we go. There we go. Very good. Very yeah. good. That is yeah. an excellent picture. Of a leg. I mean, that actually would take a lot more. I mean, that's core strength right there to be able to yeah. put that leg. I don't have a book for that's this a one. lot of flexibility. I do not have a book for that. I mean, I mean, there's enough books that have like both legs over the shoulders, not one right. random leg, and being pulled up, and that is yeah, that's a lot for both. Because that could easily he could slip out pretty easily. Ouch. And there also could be some butthole action if that out accident on that one. Uh uh-uh. uh, not today, Satan. Not, not today. today. Not today. Not my butthole today. Thank you. <laughs> Did not prep for this area to be Did breached. Not. <laughs> Unlike some authors who just feel that they, it just is, it, it just happens, you know, when you get that Coke can sized dick and you just want to stick it in some butthole <sighs> without preparation. God. I still have nightmares about that. Every, I'm not kidding you. I would say most of the time I pick up any kind of can. Do you I think, think about, about it? That. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, uh, like I'll literally just hold it in my hand and be like, never, just no, never. No. And the fact that she was so nonchalant about it, like he nope. had a Coke, Coke can sized dick, and then he was going to just ram it in my asshole without preparation. Not even a Coke can size, but a full foot long. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was like. It, it, he was We're like talking Rambo. like a pint and a half size. Like yeah, it was like he would need he would need another another leg of his pants to fit his fucking huge. Unless dick. he was like a grower, not a shower, but still, where would it go? Well, How much could suppo- it possibly grow? Well, supposedly, I mean. I was actually really honestly thinking about that book today, literally, because I was thinking about how every chapter had a different sex scene. Yes, there was a lot of sex scenes in that book. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I was like, not necessarily hot ones though. No, no, n- I don't think any of them were hot. I don't want somebody call me a bitch. I'm sorry. I don't. Sorry. Want, I don't want someone to have sex with me in an alley. Oh God. Oh. Oh. Blah. Sounds blah. very fucking. A homeless person fucking came over this garbage can. I'm sorry. And there's probably piss. The bodily I fluids. I, I don't, mm. don't want to know. That was that was a time. The best of oh. times, the worst of times. I'm just, it was like, it was one of our first ones. So It was, it was. It, we, yeah. we had some learning experiences. We did. We mm. grew from that. We grew from we that. We did. Mm-hmm. And we grew to this wonderful book. That we we're going to talk about today. Mm-hmm, I'm so mm-hmm. fucking excited. I'm pretty stoked. I really, really enjoyed this book. Yeah. And I, I've now I've ruined a whole bunch of, of the other books for you, and I feel really bad because I sent you that Why? thing about that Colin, Colin's little bit from to, uh, to fill up oh, with love. No. And, it was you like, and I told anything. you what happens with Penn and Colin. No, you haven't ruined anything. Okay. I'm still going to read it all. 
We're gonna unfortunately not for, fortunately we're gonna have to we are going to have to. It'll just be two years from now. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get through fucking Benedict's book. Anywho. I know you're not excited about it, but I'm okay with it. I don't like Cinderella tropes. I know. Sorry. It just makes me upset. I'm sorry. Just things I don't like. All right. Let's take a break. That's fine. Let's do that. And uh, let's take a little breaky. Okay. And we'll... <laughs> I knew I was gonna get you on that one. Let's we'll take a little breaky. Let's take a brief respite. Take a little breaky for me. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll come back to our stackies of uh, pros and cons. Uh, <laughs> our Sandra <Santa> stacky. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god. No one knows what we're talking about. No, but it's fine. We we enjoy it. That's all that matters. Oh my god. Did you find the place okay? Sorry, it's kind of loud for a Saturday morning. Yeah, it's fine. Um, why are we at the park, though? Well, I wanted to start running drills. Drills? Yeah, like one-on-one passing. Like soccer? Yes! We need to hone them schools! <laughs> Season's half over! <laughs> Wait, what is happening? I figured we need to get in football shape for our new Ted Lasso podcast. Okay, to be fair, it will take more than just this to get us in football shape uh also i have a lot of questions uh best way to understand the sport is to live it right (gasps) jason can use that in season three okay legitimately that's a really good line uh but right we don't have time to start an offshoot podcast and no one has time to edit it but but that's the great thing about anchor.fm anchor will do all of that for us in one little place like our own little coach beard (laughs) I know. That is one of the best things about Anchor. It's free, and the built-in tools allow us to record and edit your podcast right from your phone. Plus, they'll distribute it to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, you know, so many of the other podcasting platforms. Wait, how good is your Roy Kent impression? Why would I be doing a Roy Kent impression? I've been working on mine. You want to hear it? (gasps) No, there's kids everywhere. Little ears don't need to hear the F word this early. So we're not doing this? No, honey. Oh, man. What am I going to do with all these soccer balls and goldfish? I don't even want to know why you have actual goldfish. To visualize being a goldfish. <sighs> Will you take half of them? I, I can't guarantee my kid's not going to kill him, but yeah, okay. We're doing this. I believe we are not doing this. Oh, I believe we are. No, but we're not, though. Be curious, not judgmental. Right, I'm not being judgmental. I'm being realistic. Come on. It's a great... Uh, it's Barbecue a great sauce! Idea. Oh, we don't have time. We just don't have time. Onward! You're starting, forward! No, you're starting a horror movie podcast with Charlotte. We don't have time. I believe and believe. Oh, God. And we're back. We're back! <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking Ooh. Muppet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I'm like that Muppet that no one fucking likes. Was his name Walter? Yeah, no one likes fucking Walter. That's me. Is that wait what? Is Walter, that... he's the new one, the one from uh, the Jason Siegel, like Jason Siegel's brother. Oh, I haven't seen that one. You I've not seen not the new Muppet Muppets movie. movie. And I was the one who was like so against it, and then I went to see it and I cried. Okay, I'll as watch soon it. as the fucking like, you know, the the Muppet theme or the Muppet show theme started, I like I started bawling my eyes out okay all right wow i just got real guys i got fucking real i think we get real on this podcast a lot so yeah yeah there's that um i all right so here's a little backstory first of all obviously we're going to talk about the viscount who loved me we are um that reminds me i should really bring up the synopsis um however the thing is (laughs) Uh, I never got to give Ray her Christmas present, mostly because I had fucking COVID. Um, but also then, like, when I saw her three weeks ago, um, I fucking forgot it 
and on my dining room table. <laughs> and the situation was understandable why she forgot. You have to tell them what I got you. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the thing is, Ray remembered because she's got her life together, gave nope. me nope. this False. amazing. I should I should take a picture. And once I like scratch off all the things, I'll take a picture and we can put it on Instagram. Um, all right. So Ray got me this like movies you should like. Is it like 100 top? movies you should see? 100 movies you should see. But the coolest part about it is that it's like a scratch off. Mm-hmm. So there's the whole poster. She got me this awesome like magnetic frame so that it hangs like by itself and it's weighted so that like you can actually hang it but still scratch the things off. Like it's not mm-hmm. behind glass. Anyway, so 100 movies. Because we all um, know that. <laughs> we all know Veronica that Veronica has seen so no movies. fucking movies. <laughs> So I immediately laughed my ass off because, hello. Right. Um, And then rolled it out. Also, it came with, like, a little guitar pick to, like, scratch all the things (gasps) off. Isn't that sweet? Like, I didn't have to. Just, like, a cute little extra thing to, like. Yeah. Enhance your customer experience, you know? Well, because my first customer experience fucking sucked. Oh, right. Do you want to tell them what happened? So I opened the, so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to measure this. So I was going to, I was like going to go get, I was going to frame it. And then I thought, duh, I mean, why would I frame it? But I was like, okay, well, I can frame it. Just take the, 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 either the glass or the plastic off Uh the front and fine. And then I opened the box and it was like 100 date ideas. I'm like, and I looked at my, I looked at at the the email with like the thing. I said, it literally said a hundred movies. And I was like, are you fucking, this is my, (sighs) this is, this is my luck. And so... (laughs) I sent it back. And I have to say that the, the company was really cool about like they, they didn't respond to me in time and I fucking gave them a horrible review. And then uh, they responded back like, oh, my God, we're so sorry. And they gave me a, a refund right away. Um, but, yeah, so I got it and I was like, well, this doesn't. And I as I was buy, I was I was rebuying it. I saw um, the magnetic frame and I was like, this is better. Excellent this is call. much better. Yes. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I love it so much. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. So um, I didn't count. I will. Uh, I'll have to do that, and we'll post it on the gram. But um, I did like. I started scratching off the ones that I have seen. Mm-hmm. So my husband and I, Mister Veronica, and I are going to like start just going through and like mm-hmm. watching all of them. I laughed my ass off when I got to The Empire Strikes Back, <laughs> and I did find it fascinating. That the original Star Wars was not on there. Because I think they probably figure that most people have already seen it. To be I fair, mean, I honestly, have seen probably that one. because I would assume even people who don't like it, it was such a monumental movie for filmmaking, so I'm sure. Right. And it's yeah. a massive part of, of pop culture. I mean cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. It changed how many movies it really did change how some movies were made. Especially like ones who have models, like model building and stuff like that. And so yeah. It's pretty incredible. Especially from a costume standpoint and a makeup standpoint. Right. Yeah. Right. Very cool. Right. Yeah. Uh, So anyway, I forgot her present because I'm a winner. Um, It's literally been in this bag right here. Which is adorable. Happy Holidays. And there is a Christmas tree fully decorated. And there's a little, (laughs) like, what looks like a Labrador or a Golden Retriever. Uh And a little kitty sitting on a present. Oh, he probably pooped on that present. He probably did. He's a, probably a dick. Yep. All right. So I am going to literally take this out of the bag so that I can show Ray what I got her. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm because so excited. Because apparently, like, you and I should see each other in a couple of weeks. Or is that next week? Whatever. Because we're going to go get tattoos together. Oh, that's true. Yes, 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 yes. Regardless. So you will have this soon. However, it is apropos to what we are discussing. Okay. For tonight? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Are you okay. excited? I'm, uh, yes. Are you? Yes. Okay, ready? Ready. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, I mean, I don't own the physical copy. I'm so excited. I know. Excited. I figured you didn't. Okay, so I got her a physical copy of Romancing Mr. Bridgerton, which is which is Colin and Penelope's Because it is literally one of my favorite books. It is one of her favorite books ever. She's read it multiple times, like mm-hmm. multiple. It's sort of like her comfort read. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like whenever she's just like, we'll talk about it. And then she'll be like, I should read that again. And like, <laughs> oh my God, so I so times. love you. You know me so, we share a brain. I know. So I'm sorry that oh. it's not like the original cover, but I also thought you might like no, this I one. No, I love it. No, like, because 
I have the Duke, and I now I've got um, uh, Anthony's story. Oh, fuck! That's what I was going to do. God bless America. I was going to be like, and I'm moving out. <laughs> <laughs> moving out. Anthony's song. Come on, guys. <laughs> oh, um, damn it. Yeah. So I love it. I fucking love it. I love anyway. you, and I love the book. So that's your present. Thank you. It's a physical copy of Romancing Mr. Bitter. Oh, I'll put I love it back it. in this bag. I love it. I can't open it. When I see you next. <laughs> oh, like, well, I'm going to crack it right open. I'm going to go to that, that part where fucking Colin's fucking her in front of a mirror. I know. <laughs> um, in fact, I was just looking. Merry Christmas, my Anthony love. works in a grocery store, saving his panties for someday. <laughs> Mama Leone left a note on the door. She said, Sonny, move out to the country. Working too hard to give you a heart attack. I can't, I can't, I can't, you want to know by now. <laughs> Are you singing in the Heights? No, I'm singing Moving Out. <laughs> oh my Anthony God. song. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it seems such a waste of time. I love you. <laughs> Mama, that's moving up, then I'm moving up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, Billy Joel. How do you not <sighs> love Billy Joel? I just don't know his catalog. You know, like I I'm know. not. I recognize his role in like music right. and uh, the historical significance of his music, but right. I don't know. Like, I just didn't get into one? his catalog the way that I did with like the Beatles, you know? No, I told no. I mean, like Beatles are like, yeah. But I mean, but for some reason, Billy Joel. Growing up, because I think like my mom loved Billy Joel, so it was like, I get it. Oh, time. totally yeah. get it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, let's talk about this book. Let's do it. Um. Okay. Um, so first, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. I have a present for you. Oh, okay. So let me just play this right into the phone. Oh, fuck. <laughs> 14 promises to be another eventful season, but not, this author believes, for Anthony Bridgerton, London's most elusive bachelor, who has shown no indication that he plans to marry. And in truth, why should he? When it comes to playing the consummate rake, nobody does it better. So that is our friend Ween playing Lady Whistledown. I was like, why does she sound so familiar? <laughs> I made her do it for me last night. Oh I was my like, god, I that do is a little, amazing. I said, I want to do a little thing for Veronica for, I was like, because I wanted to do a Whistledown thing. And I'm like, and so I tried to find um, a summary of the book that was like written by Whistledown, but the one website had that, like an excerpt. So That is very good. I will send it to you. So if you want to replace what I played, but Please I wanted to do. see your, I wanted to see your, 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 Her- <laughs> Like, I was like, why does this voice sound super familiar to me? Yeah. Because, like, it's, you know, over Zoom, like, into a microphone. I love that. I love it. Yeah. Oh, ween. Yeah, because I told her, I said, it's, I said, it's Julie Andrews. She does the voice. I said, of Lady Whistledown. I said, so you. She is good at the accents. I know. So I said, I need you to do it. I said, I won't sound like that. And so um, I had her read it a couple times and then we did it. I was like, I'm going to surprise Veronica today for it. (laughs) Yeah. So, and so that was just the so first good. part of the summary, but I thought, oh. I've listened to it a whole bunch of times today. I'll bet. I'm going to listen to it a ton of times when I edit it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, oh, I'm like, oh, we still have that classical music. Yes. I'll play that. And yeah. It so was I'd, very, oh. very good. Thank you. Thank you. I did that today. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. You're technically on spring break. <laughs> You technically I mean, have time off I, this week. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So shall we discuss the Viscount? Yes. And then you were going to pull the summary. That's what I was like. I did pull the summary. Uh, I mean, that's just, again, obviously like the the fun yes. summary. Uh, loved it. Shit. Um, yeah. All right. So for those of you who look at this word and are like, where the fuck do you get me? Viscount from it? Me, at um, first, I kept calling him Vi- Viscount. Yeah, Viscount. Yeah, because it looks like it. Oops, it looks like it uh, should be pronounced Viscount. Viscount. V i s c o u n t. But it's Viscount, and yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. I only knew that from watching Bridgerton, like the first season, because I, I, they say I, it. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, so anyway, um, in case you have not figured this out yet, this is the second book in the Bridgerton series from uh, Julia Quinn. And season two of Bridgerton comes out this Friday, mm-hmm. March 25th. Um, so we thought this would be good timing. Let's read the book. And then next week, our page to screen will be season two of Bridgerton. Um, but it's not going to come out until Wednesday because, like, we have to watch somewhere between eight and ten hours of Netflix. Right. Between, right. like, Friday and Monday. I literally you know, said like, to everybody, I said, next weekend, you don't, I, I, I'm, I'm off. I'm I don't like, exist I'm just, next weekend. Yeah. Sorry, guys. No, I got I fucking books to read. Plus, I got to watch Bridgerton. So we're yeah, good. Yeah, I got to watch Bridgerton. So, like, I got to make sure I'm done with work this week mm-hmm. like so mm-hmm. i don't have to work at all over the weekend because mm-hmm. like girlfriends gotta watch hopefully gotta watch some, eight to ten some, hours of smut i was just saying we gotta watch some porn it's mm-hmm. not on Belesma, but it's Belesa. it's fine yep mm-hmm. uh all right so anywho this is anthony's story because of mm-hmm. course if you read the first book then you know that all the bridgertons are named in alphabetical order now mm-hmm. for whatever reason probably because like this romance and woman based daphne got the first book so i think probably because i think anthony needed um an example to that's a good point i think that's yeah. entirely possible but his from here on out they go in the order one who falls yeah mm-hmm. right yeah yeah yeah. because he anthony and simon were very good friends yeah um in the first book yeah i mean i assume they still are but like simon mm-hmm. doesn't really play that much of a role in this book no so it makes sense that simon is not returning Sort of. I was going to say the same thing because I mean, Daphne's there and she's got the babies, but I mean, that completely makes sense. Like, the only time that Simon is really in the book is during the Paul Mall game. Right. So, right. like, it's fine. You know, I don't think it's yeah. that big of a deal that he's not returning for season two. And Although, honestly, of course, it's sad I, because he's hot. Oh, right. I mean, because I'm thinking I, he's not in he's not in four. Again, I, and I, like I've said, I've not read three. He's not in four and he's not in, he's not in Eloise's book. So, I mean, it makes sense that Rajon Page is like, I'm going to go be a star because I'm fucking gorgeous and I'm possibly the next Bond. Oh, They're my really God. They're really pushing. They are really Stop pushing. Stop it. Are you serious? No, they are really. And Do I'm like, it. I am here for it. I thought it, I was hoping it would be Idris Elba. He's too old, unfortunately. How old is Idris Elba? He's, I want to say older than Daniel Craig. If not, if they're the same age. How old is. I mean, I love he? Idris Elba. Like, and I make I'm Fuck, su- yes. super sad that he has to he be is, doing booking dot com commercials. He's okay. forty nine. He is forty nine. Daniel Craig is fifty four. Wow. I just think I I think they're they need to have somebody a little like get some some sh- movies out young, of young young blood in them. Yeah. I mean, come on, Rage on Page. So hot. Yeah. God, he's pretty. <sighs> okay. So, uh, anywho. Uh, Here is the summary for uh, The Viscount Who Loved Me, Bridgerton, book two. This time, the gossip columnists have it wrong. London's most elusive bachelor, Anthony Bridgerton, hasn't just decided to marry. He's even chosen a wife. The only obstacle is his intended's older sister, Kate Sheffield, the most meddlesome woman ever to grace a London ballroom. The spirited schemer is driving Anthony mad with her determination to stop the betrothal, but when he closes his eyes at night, Kate's the woman haunting his increasingly erotic dreams. Contrary to popular belief, Kate is quite sure that reformed rakes do not make the best husbands, and Anthony Bridgerton is the most wicked rogue of them all. Kate's determined to protect her sister, but she fears her own heart is vulnerable, and when Anthony's lips touch hers... She's suddenly afraid she might not be able to resist the reprehensible rake herself. <sighs> Throw in a fucking corgi named uh, Newton. Newton. And, uh... and basically just light a match, toss it right in, watch everything burn. Burn. He from... literally. Did, did you. He says it. He, he says I it. I burn for you. I burn for you. Ah, I'm, I'm assuming that's where they pulled that from. I thought you said that it was in the first book. Well, I couldn't right. remember. That is in the first book. Maybe that was a thing. Yeah, maybe it was a thing. I don't remember. I, Colin doesn't say I don't know. I Colin wasn't alive so in 1814 or whatever. But I Not that I remember. You. I burned oh. for you. He says it to her. <sighs> so fucking hot. This fucking book, guys. Oh, my God. Um, Is there anything else that we... I, so... We... <sighs> 
I, I feel like something sort of important here. Um, Kate is 21 in this mm-hmm. book. Now, Kate's father, Kate's mother died when she was three. It was actually her third birthday that Kate's mm-hmm. mother died. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty Kate, traumatic. In a pretty traumatic fashion, which you end yep. up finding out throughout Very, the course of the book. Yeah. Um, but Kate's father remarried a woman named Mary mm-hmm. um, within a year of his wife yeah. passing. Um, which is which, not unheard of. I mean, it's not unheard of, but also like he didn't, child. right? Like he didn't technically follow like the mourning rules or mourning right. etiquette or whatever. But like, if you were a man in the early 1800s who didn't know a goddamn thing about raising a kid, like yeah. he remarried Mary kind of quickly. And he's Mary, the second born son of a baron, so no, oh, right. like mm-hmm. really, like no money. Right. I mean, he wasn't like, I don't think that they were destitute, but like they didn't no. have no. like. They, t- they talk about like how she had a very like, that wasn't the shambles, but it wasn't, didn't have like their carriage didn't have a crest on the side and blah, blah, right. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, and then, so he, he remarried Mary. They had another child who was four years younger than Kate. So right. she is 17 years old in this book. Seventeen. Um, 17. Um, <laughs> just like the one we took. Okay, I'm gonna stop singing. Really singing tonight, guys. Really singing tonight. Oh, that's the other thing I was gonna do. I was gonna cut. I was gonna find that part in Bob's Burgers and cut it so we could have a soundboard of every time. Just be like, she's really singing tonight. We could probably do I'll that. Do it for it's next. probably within fair mu- with within fair use. It's what five it's like, seconds, right? Yeah, I think. Um, it's right. Yeah, so. Uh, then, like, a few years prior to this book happening, her father dies. Their father dies. So now, like, there's no one to bring in money. They have two, at the time, it would have probably been two children under, two daughters under the age of 18. Yeah. Um, daughters obviously is, can't own yeah. anything. So, like. This is, they're both of their coming out at the same time. Because they could not afford to have another season exactly. for Edwina. Yeah. Yes. So, while... They would have preferred, and and Kate discusses this early on, like in one of her first chapters, that they would have preferred wait one more year for Edwina to be 18. Mm -hmm. Um, They chose to have Edwina make her debut at age 17 because Kate would have been 22. And literally, the quote, hang on, I will get it. Um, I was reading this, by the way, on the... um, gloss app or whatever it's the harlequin oh, that's app. From harlequin mm-hmm. yeah it's the harlequin app because i got it from there like on sale or something um it had been decided that the most logical time would have been when edwina was just 17 and kate almost 21 almost 21 oh so she was still 20 um she was 20 yeah mm-hmm uh, Mary would have liked to have waited until Edwina was 18 and a bit more mature, but that would have made Kate nearly 22 in heavens. But who would marry her then? Right. So it makes, as we and I were talking, it makes it's really interesting when you get to Penn's book and you get to Eloise's book because they're 28, if I remember. I, again, it, it I seems as though <laughs> a few years have passed. Like between yes. now, even even in just. The, the epilogue and like the things that happen in this book that the epilogue that like indicate time passing mm-hmm. it you, they definitely have to be in their mid to late 20s like at least past 25 you know I, I'm wondering and I'm I would assume that Shonda has talked with Julia and had her timeline all of this because like um in, it looks like the show that Colin has left. He's he's traveling and he's back, and right. we don't. That's his book, is mm-hmm. when that he's coming. He's has just arrived back right. for his book. So I'm assuming this all works out at some point. Yeah, and it's weird. Like I would have expected it to happen sooner, but like I wonder when Benedict's book happens. That's why I'm wondering if that's we were talking off air is I'm wondering if that's why we were wondering if that's why he's not really in this book right. is that he's he is meeting Sophie and right. all of that is going on with them. Yeah. At this point. Right. But then years still happen between. I don't know. I mean, I again, I've not read I, I'm specifically waiting to read these books until we get to mm-hmm. um, 
to the season of Bridgerton so that it's fresh mm-hmm. in my mind. Yeah. Super excited for Bridgerton. Like, super, super excited oh. for season two. It's going to be so fucking good. I mean, think how depressed we were about fucking the, the Duke about and I. About the Duke and I? Had, yeah, because... And I have been joking with Veronica all week. I'm like, did fucking Julia Quinn, like, hit her head and then, like... Be, be after the Duke and I and then write a fucking fantastic book I think because that's what it seems like it's like mm-hmm. the Duke and I made me so fucking angry and then yeah. this book was like one of my favorites one of our mutual friends just finished book one I think she'd watched season one mm-hmm. and she just finished the Duke and I um was she and I was angry like, like us she wasn't as angry as us but she was like I said to her like if you liked book one you will fucking love book two is this yes okay okay I like yeah. how that's our symbol for her. I I'm know. sure she'd appreciate that. She actually, I'm sure would. She probably would. Yeah. She yeah. probably would. Yeah. Um, She's special. Yeah, I, and I adore well, her. Well, the thing is, so, I, yes, I absolutely adore her, too. I, 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 we are, we are in the minority. We are in the minority on that, which is mm-hmm. like, it blows my mind. Although, Ween said, I was like, you really, you know, as she was recording this, I said, you would really actually, I said, if you haven't watched Bridgerton, she's like, I've been holding up because mostly of the rape. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah, I get that. I said, watch season two. You can ignore the first season. I said, Except for Rajon Page, which is like, God damn. Right. But he's, he's doing Maybe a lot. skip he's... that episode. I just feel so, I mean, like, I was actually thinking about, like, that whole thing with, he, you know, da- he, when he tells Daphne, just tell me w- whether or not you're pregnant. And leaves, yeah. and I was like, "How devastating for him!" Like, I just felt so bad. I mean, it was just—it was just—it made me. I, I, it maybe also it could also be because I, I, I have being assaulted too. Maybe I don't know that it hit home. I don't know. I don't know. Anyhow, that's not this book. <sighs> not this book. No. No. In How fact, Anthony th- at one point says to her, "She's so obviously like." she's a virgin because that's how well-bred ladies are in this mm-hmm. society that they are virgins when they get married and they're very innocent. Um, but, uh, at one point I forget. Oh, she's, it's their wedding day slash night. And she's asking them, do you hear that? There's like something. Ri- do you hear yeah. that? Mm-hmm. That is a fucking plane. Oh my God. Jesus. From our, like, proximity, just where we are from the airport, sometimes, I don't know if it has to do with, like, cloud cover or, like, sometimes they are so fucking low to the ground Mm -hmm. that I'm like, (laughs) y'all, I have lived through, (laughs) I have lived through too many globally catastrophic events. Uh Uh-huh. If I watch a fucking plane crash in my backyard, I'm going to be in a padded room next week, okay? Like, I can't fucking handle this anymore please stop please Please stop for the love of god fly right straighten up and fly right straighten up and fly right stay true please just keep going straight jesus i'm so sorry i like it i like it. tangent uh what were you talking about oh okay so it's their wedding night and she is nervous for many yeah, reasons, but she's nervous um, in part because, like, she's developing feelings for him. And he has told yeah. her, like, this will not be a marriage based yeah, he in sits love. Her this down. is not a love match. Well, and and, and she's completely on, on, on this one. She's like, but you told me that Edwina was going to be a love match. Right. And that, that like, wrecked me because I was like, that is not good for her psyche. That is not good for her mental place where she's going to be. No, um, but there is... Even though he didn't mean it. Even though he did not mean it, he was just trying to win her over. Right, of course. And literally, hang on, he says... Um, fuck. He says to her... Oh, damn it, where is it? Uh, oh, there it is, okay. Um, He says... Uh, there are certain things I cannot give you, Anthony said, and love, I'm afraid, is one of them. I see. Do you? Of course, she practically snapped. You could not make it any plainer if you wrote it on my arm. I had never planned to marry for love, he said. That is not what you told me when you were courting Edwina. 
When I was courting in Wiena, I re he returned, I was trying to impress you. Her eyes narrowed. You are not impressing me now. Mm -hmm. I fucking love Kate. Um, <sighs> Should we talk about, okay, so how we do things in this podcast, if you Sorry, are yeah. new, if you've not listened to us before. Um, Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> um, is we do a compliment sandwich. So um, the top bun is our, our pro, something we liked about the book. Our meat is uh, the con, something we maybe didn't like as much. And then we follow up with the bottom bun, which is another pro. So we, we end on a high note. Mm -hmm. um, Veronica. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> um, you want to tell me what I, is this our joint? We want to talk about our yeah, joint? I think this. Let's discuss our joint bun. Okay, our joint top bun. Yes, go for it. And that is the fucking banter between Guys, this book is funny as fuck. Holy shit, Anthony and Kate, the way they talk to each other, chef's kiss. Like uh, could not be better. Fire, fire. Like seriously, complete fire. Yeah, like the sparks. The hatred. I mean, this is like enemies to sort of friends to lovers. And it is mm -hmm. fucking incredible. The way yeah. they harp on each other when they don't like each other. Oh, my God. And oh, even the, her, after they do love each other, the way they her, harp on each other. Her is, first dance with him after he meets her, after she's she's met Colin, which, again, Colin, fucking love you. Colin, love you. the way that he, like, manipulated oh, Anthony. Oh, so great. Holy shit. Again, just fucking perfection oh, and, the look, and you could just I'm like you could just imagine fucking Jonathan Bailey looking over at I forgot his name whatever his name is whatever his young, name is young kid young <laughs> Luke, kid. Luke, <laughs> Luke something Luke Luke hang on I'll find it Newt Newton is his name last name Newton I don't know hang on damn it sorry I, mean, I, I cannot wait Jonathan for Bailey. this scene because I'm sure they'll have oh, it oh it's there. gonna be so fucking but Luke Newton you were right and Luke, dude, I could just imagine him looking over and being like, I'm going to fucking kill you. Because that's literally what he says in the book. Is like, I'm going, I will murder you. Like, in I his brain, he's like, I'm you. going to murder Colin. Because yeah. oh, he sets so him up. it's fucking funny. It's like, you know, <laughs> match, you know, uh, you know, so is it, what is that? How's that terminology go with, like, with tennis? Match game. Set play, or point match, or something? Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. it's perfect. perfect. So good. So yeah, fucking perfect. Because Anthony was just like, I'm going to marry this beautiful woman because she's the diamond of, uh, she's the, the first, the, the diamond, diamond of the, of the water or whatever. Water. The, uh, the, the diamond of the first water. Yeah. Yeah. And of the Which season. Daphne was yes. in season one. Or right. the Duke and I. Yeah. And she, and he's like, and I don't have any fear of falling in love with her. Because yeah. he does not want to fall in love. Nope. Because That's you find out very early that his father has died early at 38. He had, he went into anaphylactic shock from a bee sting. Right. They didn't know what that was back then. So it was like, how does someone, <laughs> how does someone die of a bee sting? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I would here, I'll read his requirements. Being okay. a discerning and somewhat organized man, he had a mental list of requirements for the position, the position, meaning yeah. like his mm -hmm. wife. I have to be in a position First, <laughs> First, she ought to be reasonably attractive. She needn't be a raving beauty, although that would be nice. If he were going to, but if he were going to have to bed her, he figured a bit of attraction ought to make the job more pleasant. Second, she couldn't be stupid. This, Anthony mused, might be the most difficult of his requirements to fill. He was not universally impressed by the mental prowess of London debutantes. The last time he'd made the mistake of engaging a young chit. <laughs> chit. I love that word chit. I love it. <laughs> fresh out of the schoolroom in conversation she'd been unable to discuss anything other than food she'd had a plate of strawberries <laughs> in her hand at the time and the weather and she hadn't even gotten that right when anthony had asked her if the weather was going to turn inclement she replied i'm sure i don't know i've never been to clement <laughs> he might have been able to avoid conversation with a wife who was less than brilliant but he did not want stupid children <laughs> Love that. I know I did too. Third, so, yeah. and this was the most important, she couldn't be anyone with whom he might actually fall in love. Yeah. Under no circumstances could this rule be broken. Yeah. 
And he he says on a number of occasions to himself and then eventually to Kate, yeah. I lusted after you even if I didn't like you. Even when, when I, I didn't, didn't like, like you. you. Mm-hmm. And um in 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 there's a couple times and and that this it's I'm gonna hold off on that because it's gonna be my pro. So um <laughs> I would like to read the um <laughs> the Paul Mall match. Yes. The yes. very end of the Paul Mall match. So there is a point where so this is pretty much the end. The 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 house party the house party. <laughs> Kid and play. House party that they go to <laughs> that Mrs. that uh Lady Bridgerton sets mm-hmm. up that she um is pretty much like so we've discussed it. We think that Lady Bridgerton, Mary, who is the stepmom, mm-hmm. and pretty much Edwina are all pretty aware and Colin I think are all pretty aware that uh-huh. um, Anthony and and Kate are, are perfect for each other. Like, yes. Because like, I they make them, multiple comments about like, multiple yes. people make comments like you both are actually quite similar. Yeah, and like do you understand that you guys look at each other all the time? Yes. Constantly. Like the way he looks at you is like, like Edwina says that to Kate like the way he looks at you? Yeah. Is and, intense. Yeah, and and so Lady Bridgerton is making sure that the Miss Sheffields are at this party. And yep. so it's a week at their station. She also uh, sends him into the garden to go for a walk. Does. She mm. does. Mm. And um <laughs> Which is a throwback to book one, really. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And he cause cause honestly, because his downfall is the garden. Oh, yep. Yep. And um, so this this whole thing like culminates in, in at this this garden part or this uh, this house party. Yep. And it's the, like literally the first it's the first day that they're there as they have this croquet game, but they call it Paul Mall. Yep. And mm-hmm. it is like fucking cutthroat. It really fucking is. Yes. Like it's it's a bunch of so it's imagine like your siblings and you're like one upping each other and you do not you've been doing this for years and yep. you will do whatever the fuck you can to win. Yep. And like the like Anthony's Cheating is, is not off limits. It's not. In fact it's encouraged. It's encouraged. And, and like Anthony has the black mallet, mallet which he calls the mallet the of mallet death. Mallet of death. And Kate picks that one. Yep. Because he is he is pissing her off because he has gone to at, like get Edwina to collect uh-huh. Edwina, and yep. he is literally like, kind of like he's at first kind of happy that she, you know like it's he's going to be late because he knows he's going to piss Kate off, but yep. then he starts getting pissed off because he's like, is she going to be late for fucking everything? Yeah, and so they finally show up and they have this game, and literally like I, it's poor Simon and Kate and Edwina have to play this game with these assholes I mean literally uh-huh. they're kind of assholes about it they're total dicks about it yeah and cause they're just like they don't care like it is like no, it doesn't matter if you're a male or a female in this one does the that Bridgertons matter the Bridgertons transform yes, during they this do. game like they, they are just so fucking ruthless they are they are I mean like it's <laughs> But it's also like one of my favorite parts. Sort of violence. Yeah. Yes, like borderline violence. It is also, though, one of my favorite parts of this book. In addition to, like, if you read the second epilogue, there's Mm -hmm. another Paul Mall game in the future. Yeah, because they play it every year and it's going to be the same people. And poor Ed, at that point, poor Ed, at this point, it becomes tradition that, like, it has to be these six people. Yeah, because then we know even, like, at the second epilogue, like, are you fucking kidding? Like, she actually they says, like, she's rolling her eyes as she's walking out. She's like, oh, my fucking God. Yep. Um, so I'm going to read from where Kate is. Kate is oh going to lose. Kate's, like, in last place. I'm already, I already have tears in my eyes, like, just thinking Because she this. knows but that Anthony's going to possibly win. And she's like, you know, I'm already going to fucking lose. Mm-hmm. What do I care? She's like, what, but I can make it, it so Anthony can't win. And said, <clears throat> so this is long. I'm sorry, guys. That's not what he said. <laughs> Choose she, she is seated. If she wanted to send him into oblivion, she'd have to send herself there as well. She'd Since she'd have to hit hers with all she was worth just to get his to move. And since she couldn't hold hers in place, heaven only knew where she'd end up. But she said, looking up at him and smiling innocently, I really have no chance of winning the game anyway. You could come in second or third, he tried. She shook her head. Unlikely, don't you think? I'm so far behind as it is, and we're nearing the end of play. 
You don't want to do this, Miss Sheffield, he warned. Oh, she she said with great feeling, I do. I really, really do. And then with quite the most <laughs> evil grin her lips had ever formed, she drew back her mallet and smacked her ball with every ounce of every single emotion within her. It knocked his with stunning force, sending it hurtling even farther down the hill, farther, farther, right into the lake. Mm-hmm. Open mouth with delight, Kate just stared for a moment as the pink ball. He had. He also got he the, has pink, the mallet. pink ball. Yep. Uh, sank into the lake. Then something rose up and within her, something strange and something, some strange and primitive emotion. And before she knew it, what she was about, she was jumping about like a crazy woman, yelling, "Yes, yes, I win! You don't <laughs> win!" Anthony stamped. Oh, it feels like I've won. She revels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yep. And Colin and Daphne, who had come dashing down the hill, skidded to a halt before them. Well done, Miss Sheffield, Colin exclaimed. I knew you were worthy of the mallet of death. (laughs) So they're super excited that she beat fucking Anthony. Like, like, it's just, it's hysterical. It's like, oh, it's such a great scene. I cannot wait to see it. It's so, so good. And even, like, um... In the second epilogue. So I guess this was, like, included in its own, oh, yeah. um, like... Short story sort of thing. Yeah, short story sort of, like, like, something like, extra so, uh, yarns kind of deal, like Petty Reed had, you yeah, know? Um, it was, like, Tales from Bridgerton or something yeah, like something that. Like yeah, something like that. It was, like, its own little novella. Mm-hmm. But now that Bridgerton is coming out, like, she's including them in every book. So yeah. there's a second, ep- there's an epilogue and there's a second epilogue. And that was the case yeah. in the first book too. But in the second ec- epilogue, both there epilogues. is another. Oh, no, no, the first epilogue. The first the one. Music. Yeah. Right. The second one, there is another Pomo game. Oh my God. It's so funny. And the lead up to it where Kate and Anthony are trying to best each other is so. The strawberry jam. Fucking funny. Like, yeah, because they're like it's it comes with like um bribing uh maids like and... the maids and the butlers and the valets, like they all just bribe their fucking staff. Like at one point there is a discussion about Colin, a ten Colin. pound bribe. Colin did, yes, Colin bribed, Colin 10 pounds. bribed someone, like the butler or the valet, ten it was fucking the maid. pounds. It was, it was the maid the... She... Yeah. And she was like, That is literally more than the entire like the maid's entire salary for the year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They have no shame. They don't fucking care. They don't. It's yeah. <laughs> it is incredible. It's, like the banter between the two of them. It's oh. not even because they do form like a bit of a friendship, which I will bring up in my bottom pun. But yeah. like the two of them form this little friendship, and that friendship is like, it's, it's something that personally I feel is like really important in mm-hmm. a romantic relationship. That like you have this friendship and above all else that is the foundation of your relationship so like they managed to have like even though they lusted after each other they managed to form this friendship where they legitimately care about each other as humans not just like from a sexual standpoint like they care about each other as humans yeah and then you know the fun stuff too but like (laughs) the whole scene with the fucking tea set yeah oh my fucking god that was hysterical <laughs> he's trying to figure out he's just drinking tea so he can get the tea he's off drinking the table. tea just to get the tea out of the teapot so that he can drag her across the table into his lap and in the yeah. meantime she just leaps across the table. yeah because he says some of the nice he does one of the he fucking because nice, FYI a, guys like Anthony in the in Bridgerton the fir, like the the show and we don't really see that much in the Duke, the Duke and I, because he's not it's, he's not a major character. He does right. do some shitty things in the Duke and I, but right, um, he has a he, much larger role in the show in season one than he and does in the book. Yeah, he's yeah. and we see the whole thing with this this opera singer that we meet in this book. Like, yes. they build that out in this. And which, I actually did like that. That's I actually kind of like look now that I've read book two. I like mm-hmm. how they incorporated it into season one. I think it makes sense. It does because there's just all these layers that they're you know that they're incorporating. Um, mm-hmm. But he is a good dude. Like you, we really, you know, you really. At one point, she calls him a hero, and I'm like, 
Mm-hmm. He kind of is. He's definitely mm-hmm. a romantic hero, but he kind yeah. of is. Can mm-hmm. I read the little bit of Daphne at the Paul Mall game? Of course you can. Because this was another part that made me laugh. Because poor Simon. So Simon and Kate are like, and, and Wiener are like, again, like, we don't, we're not fucking, you know, Bridgertons. We don't give a shit about this. But they're right. like, everyone is so fucking, you know. Um, but Daphne has come to, like, immediately grabs onto Kate. And it's like, we're friends forever now. Yeah, we're friends and, now. Yeah, and so she's like, the things you must have learned, Kate said, quite impressed. Can you give a man a black eye? Knock him to the ground? Daphne grinned wickedly. Ask my husband. Ask me what the Duke called out from where he and Colin were placing a wicket mm-hmm. a wicket on a tree root on the opposite side of the tree. Nothing! The Duke Nothing. And Duchess, the Duchess called out innocently. I've also learned, she whispered to Kate, when it's, the be- when it's best just to keep one's mouth shut. Men are easier to manage once you understand a few basic facts about their nature. <laughs> Which are, Kate prompted. Daphne leaned forward and whispered behind her cupped hand, They're not as smart as we are. They're not as intuitive as we are. And they certainly don't need to know about 50% of what we do. She, she looked around. He mm-hmm. didn't hear that, did, did he? Simon stepped out from behind the tree. <laughs> Every word! <laughs> oh. ah. yeah, it's, it's very, very funny. There was a lot of funny... I mean, like... The whole fucking scene with the dog and the... And <laughs> oh, holy shit. Listen, I cannot wait to see Jonathan Bailey have, like, a Mr. Darcy moment coming out of the pond. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I am not sad about that. No. Even no. if it's exaggerated. Like, that didn't happen in Pride and Prejudice either. Yeah. But, like, in the book, Anthony gets sort of wet like his legs get wet and his arm gets wet but like he's not submerged no 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 he's not there's not going to be like any shirt sticking to him however i did i believe see a steel and i think it's i think it's sebastian or sorry sebastian i think it's benedict why don't i call him sebastian (laughs) becky sebastian barnes Uh, benedict (laughs) i think it's benedict and and um and anthony so i think yeah like i think benedict with for for uh, b- 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 Bearbrook, Burbrook. Oh, interesting. Because they did Bearbrook so dirty in the first they really movie, did. first show. They I mean, they can't they can't do anything with like him anymore. how would they ever redeem him from that? No, I mean it's okay that he marries a Featherington. No one gives a shit. But right, yeah. Oh my god. Do we want to talk about our meats? Yeah. Should we? Shall we talk about meats? You know, this is yeah. always the part that makes me hungry. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? I can start. Um, so Julia Quinn has this device that that just confuses me sometimes. And that's that she switches perspective pretty frequently and without warning. Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Because at one point, it's like, who's talking now? Yeah. Like, like it's... it's it, Yeah, it should... Yeah. We're also it, used to, like... Here's a perspective of this chapter. Yes. And and that's, it's sort of a difference in romance. Um, the genre itself, like usually you either have one perspective, like Mariana Zapata offers one perspective for entire books. It's always the heroine's perspective. Some authors do dual perspective where you have the hero and you have the heroine. Mm-hmm. But then like... Julia, sometimes it's first person, sometimes it's third person, and both of those are fine. But the way that Julia Quinn writes, at least in this series thus far, is that she does not delineate when the perspective is shifting. There is no chapter change, and there is no, like, line break. There's nothing. Mm -hmm. There might be a couple extra spaces, but there isn't necessarily, depending on how you're reading it. Like, if it's Mm -hmm. on a digital device what kind of app you're reading it through. It doesn't necessarily show you that there is a break. So sometimes there were, there's just like a perspective shift that you're just like, what the fuck just happened? Like who, who am I reading? Whose thoughts am I reading? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was noticing that more this time. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Again, like in this, in this instance, I read it in like the Harlequin app, whereas Mm -hmm. I would have read book one and probably the Kindle app. So, I don't know. Like, there could be a difference it's, in that. I read it in the Kindle app, and, and okay. it's the same. So, you had the same experience. Yeah. I mean, listen, it's not like I I still really enjoyed this book. Like, I might go as far as to say 
I, I probably loved this book. It's very, very good. I will probably read it again. Or at least reread parts of it again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but that disoriented me at times. Mm-hmm. I will say mm-hmm. it like that. It disoriented me. Yeah. No, I, I agree completely. I noticed it more this time. And I think it's probably because... <clears throat> In the last few, the, the last a, a, lar- a large number of the last uh, of the last uh, rom- um, historical romance I've been reading have been dual perspective, and they tell you like you know, a lot of them don't announce who it is, but you can get coming into yeah, it, like, you get it, it quickly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and like the book that I'm going to talk about um, in our recommendations or like what I've been reading or whatever, also dual perspective from the third person, but it's very you get you gather it quickly, even if it's not. Even if it wasn't marked, you would still get it quickly. It doesn't give their and name. It gives, yeah. like, a, a picture. Like, she has a butterfly. He has a phoenix. You know, like, so yeah, it's... Yeah, and that's the same with the one I'm going to recommend, too. It's just, yeah, yeah. 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 It's more de- delineated. Yeah. 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 What is your meat? It's Which just we will a... just say is corned beef because we're around St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Or brisket for me. Thank you. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it's, we talked about it earlier and we talked about it, like it, we referenced it. It's just, it's hard to have a 17 year old be the one that like all of the men are like jonesing for. And I totally yeah. get it. Cause you know, y- y'all die early at that point. You die right. young at this point. So I get Except it. Except Julia extra Quinn years. specifically says that Anthony lives to be 92. Okay. And I was like, girl, there was no penicillin. Yeah, <laughs> like, you really does, think someone who lives in the eighteen hundreds made it? Like he would have been born in the seventeen hundreds. Yeah, does he outlive Kate then? I don't know. I don't know how old Kate lives to be. But in at the end of this book, Julia Quinn has like some sort of author's note or whatever. Oh, uh huh. Um, and it's specifically. Hang on, I'll get to it. Author's note. Um. Nope, that is not what I asked to see. Well, as you're looking that up, I just want to talk. Uh, it was Go for it. Funny because I was talking with my mother today. We we're talking about somebody we both knew that she's like, oh yeah, you know her mom. And I was like, well, you, her mom. How old is her mom? Because this woman in particular is in her sixties. And I said, because you know, I remember when she told us about her mom getting married. Her mother was eighteen, and she married a seventy-year-old man. It was an arranged marriage. And I thought. Uh, uh, and it just I think about that time period, I and mean, this is nowadays, but Gross. I think about then, and that would have been like nothing. Like that would have been like every day. Oh yeah, so he's got money, so go for it. You know, um, he'll die soon, and then you'll be a widow, and you can fuck all the people you want, all the men you want at that point, because that's what men did was fuck widows. Which right, I was like, that's true. she can still get pregnant, guys. I <laughs> mean, what is going right. to happen? Like, she's going to get pregnant. Just because she's like, a widow does not mean that like she can't get pregnant. How old is she? You know, I mean, right, hello. exactly. I guess just ejaculating on the sheets like we've discussed. Um, Okay, so here's the author's note. Sharp-eyed readers will notice that the bee sting that killed Edmund Bridgerton was actually the second sting he'd received in Mm -hmm. his life. This is medically accurate. Bee sting allergies generally don't manifest themselves until the second sting. Since Anthony has only been stung once in his life, it's impossible to know whether or not he's allergic. As the author of this book, however, I'd like to think I have certain creative control over the medical conditions of my characters. <laughs> so I've decided that Anthony has no allergies of any kind and furthermore will live to the ripe old age of 92. Oh. Which is very cute. But, you know, this is the 1800s, Julia. Like, I mean, although, I mean, we do, there are <laughs> there are times where, yeah, I mean, okay, here's the other thing I want. Okay, so besides the people young. The other thing I would like to talk about is uh, poor Anthony and um, Anthony and Edwina falling into the fucking serpentine. Oh, because man. I literally watched a, a I'm obsessed with this um, absolute history channel on YouTube and I watched a episode about Victorian now and Victorian area era. So we're talking 1850s to uh, like the beginning of the um, 1900s. We're talking, that's when plumbing became, like, the, you know, the nouveau riche. That's, like, when they, you know, the rich people took it on. This, the Literally, all of the aqueduct, all of the, 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 the rivers, the Thames in particular, but all of your tributaries or whatever, in London, 
were sewers. There was literally piles of poop floating down river during this time. Yep. It's pretty gross. I mean, both of them probably could have died from... Any various number of diseases. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, literally at one point in this documentary, they said the smell was so bad... No. ...that Buckingham Palace and Parliament both oh. had to evacuate for the summer. It was oh. so bad. I would imagine so, that the stench would get pretty bad over the summer in the heat. Yes. Well, and then that's also why cholera Gross. got so big. Because then people were drinking out of uh, public public fountains. Uh, yep. And guess uh, what was guess where that water was coming from? Uh, yep. So the fact that the two of them fall into the serpentine, I was like, they're both dead. They're both dead now. Peace out. I mean, like, they have all kinds of horrible diseases. At least, probably, salmonella, I don't know, uh, septis, sepsis, uh, probably, I don't know. I feel like, it, I mean, he does say, like, he takes an hour-long bath after that. Yeah. He's like, well, he actually says, my well, the only thing was, my legs were, were, were soaked. And he's like, yeah. but it just felt like I needed to wash everything. But poor Edwina was sick for She was weeks. like, yeah, she was sick. I mean... We know now that, like, it's an old wives' tale that you might be, like, you might catch a cold from being outside. No, but it was probably the poop. It was, pr- exactly. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, she didn't have, in the book it talks about how, like, she had caught a cold or whatever. Like, yeah. it, it wasn't that. The guy, she, no, it was. It, she probably yeah, had, like, was... a, the equivalent of pink eye. Like, she had conjunctivitis. <laughs> what is it called? She had conjunctivitis. Poop, poop yeah, she had poop lung. <laughs> she, ah. she had poop arms. Gross. Oh, uh, I can tell you all kinds of stories about that I learned from that. I don't want to know anymore. Nope. We okay. can stop there. Okay. Let's talk about bottom buns. Go okay. for it. Let's do it. Um, all right. So my bottom bun, for better or for fucking worse, is really that, like, I love the reformed rake trope. I just love it. And he even says to her at one point, provided you do not, like, ban me from your bed, yeah, I yeah. will be faithful to you. Yeah. And even when he said it, I was like, but would you? you know, like, because, because he's like, like, because she, she's, well, I, and I think part of that is because she literally heard him like with his mistress. Yep. Yeah. And I think though, I think that that was, that was a big step for him, I think, honestly. Mm-hmm. So what Ray is referring to is that um, if you watch Bridgerton season one, Anthony is seen with an opera singer. Maria Rosso, Rosso, mm-hmm. Rosso. Um, now she is not discussed. None of that is discussed in season one, no. uh, or I'm sorry, in oh, book there's, one. It's hinted at a couple times that he, that about the opera singer. It is hinted at. Okay, sure, but like not but to not, the like, extent no. that it's discussed don't meet or her, shown no. in the show, no. right? Mm-mm. Now in book two, that is discussed. Still not to the extent that it is in season one of Bridgerton, but I feel like that was really just setting Anthony's backstory up. His rake, rakiness. His yes. rakiness. Um, so that they can focus on Anthony courting Edwina and then Kate um, mm-hmm. in season two. Anyway, um, Anthony is so dead set on not falling in love with anyone that he is specifically looking to Edwina because he does not feel any kind of attraction to her. No spark. He he acknowledges that she is beautiful, Mm -hmm. but does not feel any kind of spark with her. And so he's like, this would be safe. I am attracted enough to her that I could bed her and have heirs with her, but I would not fall in love with her. I'm not I'm interested only, in her in that way. And I only hope, I, I, I would hope, and, and luckily we don't have to worry about it, but I'd hope that he still wouldn't have a mistress. But I kind of think he would. I th- I don't know. I mean, we, I we won't know. know, but like... And luckily we, yeah, luckily we don't know, so it's fine. Right. Um, but... In the meantime, even while he is courting Edwina, is entranced by Kate and cannot tear his eyes off of her 
and is constantly looking for her. Mm-hmm. Even when he is courting Edwina, he still shows up at the house mm-hmm. unannounced. Mm-hmm. Um, and instead of leaving the flowers, so he brings flowers for not only Edwina, but for Kate and Mary, which he says at the time when my, when Daphne was being courted, mm-hmm. someone brought flowers for the mother. He so he like brings that up and, sh- and Kate is floored because Kate has never received flowers. Which broke my heart. I know. But that was she's fucking going, painful. She's going over all the flowers like, you'll look good in this room. You'll, you'll look, look good, good over my... in this window and you'll look nice on my yeah. bedside table. You know, yeah. like... Because what happens is that, like, Edwina is basically allergic to all the flowers, so then the cake yeah. ends up with all the flowers. So he specifically brings her a bouquet of roses. I think it's roses. Yeah. It's roses. And she the is... perfect bud, she says. Yes. And she is, like, overwhelmed by that. And she's mad. She's actually mad because she's like, I fucking want to, like, rip them apart. I and, like, want to hate you and hate these roses, but, like, I'm so taken aback by this that you have brought these to me and and so anthony says like you know someone one of daphne's suitors did this and she says and what happened to this suitor of daphne's and anthony gets this like arrogant as hell smirk Mm -hmm. and says he married her and so like kate knows that he's serious about marrying edwina yep but Anthony is drawn to Kate and that makes him not want like he even he even acknowledges that like I am too interested in her. I yep. like her too much. I want to hang out with her too much. And therefore, I need to marry Edwina because I cannot be with someone who entices me as much as Kate does. Well, and she says to him too. She's like cuz they kiss. They kiss. I mean this this scene also was another one that wrecked me a little bit is when it's after the opera singer and the, he pretty much tells the opera singer to leave or whatever yeah because he and sees her like it's an accident she has like she was trying to hide yeah and of course yeah, well. like <laughs> yeah and ends up in his fucking office yeah and um and I, I forgot where I was going with that <laughs> <laughs> oh well they kiss Oh, in the office, what the right? Yeah, what the hell was I talking about? Uh, Edwina and Kate. Edwina and they and kiss, Kate. and he is remember. like, "Oops." Who were we talking right before that? Uh, how he really likes Kate and therefore does not want to. Oh, I don't remember now. Okay. But they kiss. They kiss. They, kiss. they do. Remember. They kiss. My God, my brain went like gone. It was just like done. It's also eleven done o'clock here. on a Monday. So yeah, <laughs> you right. and I are like what. Um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but no, yeah. Kate is like, Kate is drawn to him and Anthony is drawn to her. And she is less, how do I put this? She just wants Edwina to be happy. And Anthony, at one point in his internal oh. musings or whatever, is like, did you remember? Okay. I remember. Um, Anthony is like, you know, she. She might be jealous of her sister because he, because the younger sister is the prettier one. He eventually realizes that that's just not the case. That's not what's going on. She really just loves her sister. She really just loves Edwina. And she's really looking out for Edwina. And she doesn't Mm -hmm. want Anthony to break Edwina's heart. And she says that a couple times. She's like, Mm -hmm. you should know why I'm doing this. Yeah. I love my family like you love your family. Yep. The what I was thinking is, so after they kiss, you know, like, that scene was fucking, that scene fucking wrecked me. Because, like, he says some shit that I was like, oh, dude, that sucks. But she says later, the next day or whatever, she's like, this kiss will always be between us. This yeah. will always be here. If you want to marry my sister, this is always going to be between us. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, if I thought that for every woman I kissed, and I think he says that, but it's he does not believe it. Like, he doesn't. Yeah. Oh, Anthony. 
it's just, it's so clear to everyone. I mean, we have brought this up before. Like, it's so clear to Edwina and Mary and Lady Bridgerton that he has feelings for her. But mm-hmm. he is so dead set on not falling in love with anyone mm-hmm. that he refuses to see it for what it is. Even yeah. though his behaviors are changing. Even though he wants to be with her. Like, there's at one point, even after they get married... Like, spoiler alert, I mean, hello. But, like, after they get married, he comes home. He's been spending the entire day away from the house, even though he doesn't need to. Like, he could conduct business from the house. And he chooses not to because he's trying to to create distance. To stay away from her so that he does not fall in love with her. And also to create distance from him so that she does not fall in love with him. Mm -hmm. And... One day, he's just like, what could one afternoon hurt? And so he goes home. There's no one else at, like, his club or whatever. So he goes home and finds Kate and Edwina, like, having tea or whatever in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Kate goes to, like, escort Edwina Edwina out. And we're left with, like, Anthony's musings, right? First she's like, I'll be back in a few seconds. And he's like, like, I'll be counting them. Counting this. Yes. Yeah. But he sits there and he thinks, like, you know, I was at the club and nothing was interesting there. And I just found myself wondering, like, what is Kate doing? Yeah. And so he came home to see her. Yep. And then they end up, like, missing a ball because... Because they're fucking. Because, yeah, well, that. But, you know, like, it just his... I've always believed, I've been a firm believer of, like, action speaking louder than words. And... Anthony's actions speak so much louder oh, than yeah. words all yeah. the time. I mean, even like all the time, even when he's irritated with her, when Newton gets fucking loose. Oh, he yeah, he wants to murder her. He's on so occasion. mad at her, but like is also concerned for her well-being and is also concerned for Edwina, but like. Edwina, he he says later, like, so he ends up taking Edwina home because Mm -hmm. she's sopping wet. He is wet. Like, he's trying to figure out how people are going to get home um, to get cleaned up and whatever. So he's arranging for Edwina to get home. And he says, like, I will take her home. Kate, wait here with fucking, what's his face? Bearbrook. Thank you. Bearbrook, yeah. And Newton, obviously. Um, and so he's arranging transport for everyone. So he ta- he borrows someone else's, like, carriage, basically. Carriage. Mm-hmm. Takes Edwina home. And the next day, like, or a couple days later, Kate is asking Edwina, like, what happened in the carriage? Like, what happened? Yeah. What did you guys talk about? And she's like, oh, we, the weather, you know, like, just kind of banal topics, you know, nothing really important. And Kate is floored by that. But then, like, we get to Anthony's perspective of that and he's like, I was so consumed by thoughts of Kate and, like, his irritation of Kate mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that he could barely muster up polite conversation with Edwina. Yeah. If you're thinking about her that much, what is your deal? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, Do you, I, I don't know this story too well, and I, I feel so bad for not knowing. Do you know too much about Taming of the Shrew? I don't know very much about Taming of the Shrew. I wonder if, isn't if this... this is part of it. Hmm. That's a good thought. Um, Because it seems like these two, like you've got Benedict and Beatrice, who right. are at each other's throats for most of it. And mm-hmm. they realize they love each other at the end. Um, yeah, he's... So <clears throat> the other thing is that like with him, he... So he does personally like the one thing that like blew me away because I don't think he he says something okay so there's a, there is a scene in oh this is very much shaming the shrew is it it is okay so the main plot depicts the courtship of Petruchio and Katharina the headstrong abdurate shrew um, initially Katharina is an unwilling participant in the relationship however Petruchio tames her with various psychological and physical torments such as keeping her from eating and drinking blah 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 that's not really part of this the subplot features a competition between the suitors of Katarina's younger sister Bianca who is seen as the ideal woman 
The question of whether or not the play is misogynistic is, has become the subject of considerable controversy, particularly among modern scholars, audiences, and readers. So, like, there's definitely elements there. Yeah. Ten Things I Hate About You. Oh, my God. I fucking love that movie. That movie. Put that on a pedestal. You will never fucking convince me that movie is not just kiss perfection. Okay. Can I just, a little aside, in, yes. a, in, a, in a Zoom meeting recently, somebody asked, like, we had to give one, one word for your day. And I said, mm-hmm. do y'all seen that movie, Ten Things I Hate About You? Mm. Remember that joke? You can be overwhelmed. You can be underwhelmed. Can you just be whelmed? I said, that's where I'm at. I like that's that. That's where I'm at. Mm-hmm. I think that's perfect. I might say yeah. that in my next meeting when someone asks me how I'm doing. That movie is amazing. That movie is fantastic. <gasps> Thank you, He's Heath great. Ledger and Julia Stiles. And Jogo Love. Jogo Love's in this movie. Everyone forgets that, but Jogo Love's in the movie. <gasps> You're right. I've seen the movie a number of times. Mr. Veronica and I were talking about Third Rock from the Sun today. The uh, Was the the big head, the great big head? Yeah. Yep. Because it takes place in, like, Rutherford, which is a fictional suburb of Cleveland. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was, like, Jogo Love's first big thing that he was in. Yeah, I didn't like Jogo Love until when he cut his hair. Well, um, sure. But, like, I also, mean, mostly because I'm jealous of his hair. Also, Jogo Love is on a number of um, Apple TV shows right now. Um, all of them are usually just the, 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 like, the screen cap for it is just him standing in front of a whole bunch of kids in, behind him. I don't know. It's, he's a teacher in a lot of them. Anyhow. Um, he's pretty. He is very... I love him. Um, my... My pro is very close to what your pro is. I mean, okay. my pro is literally like parts of this book that now rereading it brought me to tears. A lot of them brought me to tears just because they were so, I think they hit harder than they had in the past for me. I don't know why, but they did. And I don't know if it's just because I've been reading so much more romance novels than I have ever had in the past. Like, it feels like I'm just constantly reading, which is cool. <laughs> but, um... Um, so I hate to just read it, you guys, for the whole thing, but I, 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 there are some scenes that are just so fucking, like, um, uh, there's the first time fucking, so every time that Anthony sees Kate, especially at the beginning, like, he doesn't, his breath isn't caught at the first time, he just notices that she's fucking beautiful. He's mm-hmm. like, while she might not be as beautiful as her like sister. Like, conventionally beautiful as her, beautiful sister. her sister. Right. She's gorgeous. Like, mm-hmm. it's like, and it's, it's, he's almost like, you fucking guys are stupid. Guys like, are he's still, dumb. like, from the beginning, like, even though he fucking hates her, he's like, mm-hmm. am I the only person that sees her as gorgeous? Like, she's mm-hmm. gorgeous. And, but when his breath gets taken, <laughs> it's like, oh. so I'm going to read this. Okay. Okay. Mm. The light from the sconces on either side of the front door had filtered down to her skin, bathing her with a flickering glow, and Anthony's breath was sucked right out of him. His glass tumbler landed on the wide window sills with a heavy thunk. This was getting ridiculous. He wasn't self-delusional enough to mistake the tightening of his muscles as anything other than desire. Mm-hmm. Bloody hell, he wasn't even like the, he didn't even like the woman. She was too bossy, too opinionated, too quick to jump to conclusions. She wasn't even beautiful, at least not compared to quite a few of the ladies flitting around London for you know. Kate Kate's face was a touch too long, her chin uh, hair too pointed, her eyes a shade too big. Everything about her was too something. Even her mouth, which vexed him to no end with its endless streams of insults and opinions, was too full. It was a rare event when she actually had it closed and was treating him to a moment of <laughs> blessed silence. But if he had, if he happened to look at her in that split second, for surely she would not be silent for much longer than that. All he saw were her lips, full and pouty, and provided that she kept them shut, didn't actually speak. Eminently kissable. The fact that first part where he's like his he like he he it's a bodily like yeah he just and the fact that she feels on a number of occasions like how not beautiful that she is because of mm-hmm. soci- societal norms at that point yep um uh oh, so the big thing for me was this part which was they were actually literally having sex 
They're literally, he's inside of her. Mm-hmm. Like the first and time, right? Is that what you're talking about? It's the first time. Yep. <sighs> okay, so I'm sorry, guys. This is going to be it's gonna be a lot here. But this, I think, um, I'm going to skip. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's like, it's five or six pages. So, um, oh God, he groaned, plunging back into the hilt, throwing his head back as his spine arched. You were so beautiful, so unbelievably. Kate? She stiffened beneath him and not in climax. He froze. What's wrong? He whispered. He saw a brief flash of pain, the emotional stir, not the physical, flash across her face before she hit it and whispered, nothing. That's not true. Um, you called me beautiful, she whispered. For a good ten seconds, he just stared at her, and for life of him, he couldn't understand how that was a bad thing. But then again, he never professed to understand the female mind, and we're going to skip again. again. I'm not beautiful, she whispered. Her eyes met his. She looked shattered and broken, but before he could contradict her, she said, Who were you picturing? He blinked. I I beg your pardon? Who did you think of when you make love to me? Anthony felt as if he had punched in the gut. The breath whooshed from his body. Kate, he said slowly, Kate, you're mad. I know a man doesn't have to feel desire for a woman to find pleasure with her, because Mary told her that. Right, Mm -hmm. He, he, she cried out. You think I don't desire? He choked out. God in heaven, he was ready to explode right now within her, and he hadn't even moved for the last 30 seconds. Her lower lip trembled between her teeth, and a muscle spasmed her neck. Do you, do you, do you think of Edwina? And then he froze. How could I possibly confuse the two of you? Kate felt her face crumble, felt hot tears stinging at her eyes. She didn't want to cry in front of him. Oh, God, especially not now, but it hurt. It hurt so much. And his hand grasped her cheeks with stunning speed, forcing her to look up at him. Listen to me, he said, his voice even as intense. And listen well, because I'm only going to say this once. I desire you. I burn for you. I can't sleep at night for wanting you. Even when I didn't like you, I lusted for you. It's the most maddening, guile, damnable <laughs> thing. And But there it is. And if I hear one more word of nonsense from your lips, I'm going to have to tie you to the bloody bed and have my way with you a hundred different ways until you finally get it through your silly skull that you are the most beautiful and desirable woman in England. And if everyone else doesn't see it, then they're bloody fools. It's just, he's, mm-hmm. it, there's, there's a couple, I mean, like, there's times where, I mean, she, um, I mean, he does some things that are pretty amazing, um, yep. uh, with him and with, with, um, with Penn. Oh like, God. He stands up for Penn in like a really oh. beautiful way. Um, so <laughs> and for Edwina, after mm-hmm. after he and Kate are married, he he makes he he tells Kate of a gesture he's considering for Edwina, and it's very sweet. It, it's not necessary; he doesn't have to do it. Bridgerton, Bridgerton shot Cressida, a hard look, Cressida, whatever. Yeah, I mean, She's her last name's Cowper. Her last name's fucking Cowper. She's awful. She's disgusting, but did not say anything. Instead, he turned quite deliberately to Kate and Penelope and murmured their names in greeting. Kate nearly gasped with glee. He given Chrysida Cowper the cut direct. Miss Sheffield, I hope you'll excuse us as I escort Miss Featherington to dinner. But you can't escort her in, Chrysida bl- blurted out. I'm sorry, had I included you in the conversation? Um... Bridgerton offered Penelope his arm, turning his back on Chrysida in the process. I do hate a bully, don't you? Word. He murmured. Um, Bridgerton She's offered her a small worst. secret smile over Br- Penelope's hand. In that moment, Kate had the oddest feeling that she understood this man completely. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is, there are a couple instances... I don't really want to give it away because like I knew this was coming when I was reading the book. Like as soon as Kate has a phobia and as soon as I learned oh. about the phobia, I was oh. like, Oh, I cannot fucking wait for him oh. to find her amidst like phobia paralysis. Like I just mm-hmm. knew it was coming. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah. That was going to be one of the other ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was just waiting for it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Cause that is like another trope. It, 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 she gives it like, 
Oh, is it going to rain? Yeah. Yeah. Like, she gives enough foreshadowing that I was like, oh, I am waiting for it. Mm-hmm. So it happens um, halfway-ish throughout the book, maybe? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's a little before because they, they, they're they pretty much married by 64%. Right. Through. So, like, it happens at the country party or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, after they get married, um, there are many things that go down between the two of them. Um, but a couple things happen that are uh, instrumental to Kate's, like trauma healing process from losing Mm -hmm. a parent that young and then losing another one you know the two of them um they have a lot in common they have a lot in common especially when it comes to like that shared experience of losing a parent young and i have been fortunate enough at this point in my life to not experience that but like Mm -hmm. i i understand the concept of losing a um, authority figure or a parent young mm-hmm. versus when you're old enough to have experienced some life with them. Yep. And Kate has experienced both. But Anthony has only, has sort of halfway experienced them. Mm-hmm. And that he lost his father when he was 18. And so he, he had time with his father. Mm-hmm but is clearly very traumatized from that experience. Mm-hmm. So there's a, there's a moment where she's kind of working through some of her trauma, um, which is like a very 21st century thing. Like that's how we describe it. Right. Yeah. Um, so anyway, they do dirty things. Um, <laughs> and uh, this is from his perspective, but when they were done curled in each other's arms as they fought for control over their labored breath, Kate closed her eyes in bliss and surrendered to an overwhelming lassitude. Anthony did not. He stared at her as he drifted off and then watched her as she slumbered. He watched the way her eyes sometimes moved under her sleepy eyelids. He measured the pace of her breathing by counting the gentle rise and fall of her chest. He listened for each sigh, each mumble. There was certain mom- there were certain moments a man wanted to sear on his brain, and this was one of them. Um, and it turns out she wakes up, and uh, he said he thinks to himself he didn't want to let go, he never wanted to let go. And what I texted you at this time, and I thought to myself like it reminds me of Beach Read, where Gus is like I am overwhelmed when you when I watch you sleep. Mm-hmm. Like, I am overwhelmed by your existence. Like, I just yeah. cannot fucking handle that shit. Yeah. Even when Anthony did not think that he loved her, like, at this point in the story, he did not oh, know that he loved her. Head over heels. He's yeah. clearly head over heels in love with her, but doesn't know it and can't admit it to himself. Yeah. And then when yeah. he does, he flips the fuck out. Oh, does he flip out? He, oh my God, does he flip out? Yep. And it's not because he, he first he, he like kind of he says at one point he's in love with her. And then then it doesn't hit him until after yeah. they've had sex. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, God, I'm in yep. love with he's this. Like, oh, like, it's fuck. like, it's this for because she says and always and he's like, yeah, and all it's almost forever like, and always. It like and echoes in his brain and mm-hmm. always. And it's like and then he goes, does something stupid. And yeah, well, he's doing things like super stupid, but he does enough stupid shit. Yep. Where I was like, if I was Ken, I'd be like, get your fucking ass home. Yeah. Well, and Benedict and Callan essentially tell him that. Like, go the fuck home. You're being a dumbass. And so does Eloise. Eloise, like, Eloise is like, what the fuck are you doing? Um, yeah. He actually, so this is the part where he finally realizes he's in love with her, which is like the same day that Kate realizes, like, acknowledges to herself that she has also fallen in love with him. Yeah. yeah. Um, Kate had won, whereas he who had acknowledged his demons but refused to fear them, was now petrified with terror, and all because the one thing he swore would never happen had come to pass. He had fallen in love with his wife. He had fallen in love with his wife, and now the thought of dying, of leaving her, of knowing that their shared moments together would form a short poem and not a long and lusty novel. It was more than he could bear.
And then he makes stupid decisions because he's freaked out. Because <laughs> he's stupid. Because <laughs> he's dumb. <laughs> um, oh, God. Oh, and Be- Beatrice and Benedict are much ado about nothing. Sorry. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. <sighs> this book, guys. Read it. It's Fucking so read good. It. So read it. I mean, y'all, wait till you get to wait till we get the four, and I just lose my goddamn mind. You're but just gonna cry the whole time. Oh, four and two are my favorites. I mean, I They're really did so, like. I mean, I liked Eloise's book, book a lot too. This book is so fucking good. It like, is just very good. Truly perfect. Um, shall we? Okay, first of all, would you recommend this book? Oh, for fuck! Yes, please. Obviously, if you haven't read it, please. Yeah, Abby. Would this book embarrass our moms? No. Probably not. I mean, it's probably okay. Yeah. My mom won't read it because she doesn't like historical romances. Okay, but fair. I gave her Sweet Spot this weekend. I, I bought Sweet Spot and I gave oh, it to her. Oh, so. that's nice. She's, yeah, so, yeah. Aww. Anyhow. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Well, why don't we take a brief respite and then let's come back yes. and talk about ratings and recommendations. That sounds wonderful. I love it. Lovely. Yes. Will you take a breaky? We're back. <laughs> Shit. And we're back. We're back, bitches. Hell yeah, we are. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. All right. So shall we discuss our rating system? Yeah. Um, so we rate on hearts and egg stars and bars. Hearts and eggplants. <laughs> <laughs> um, so hearts is how romantical was the book. Mm-hmm. Um, eggplants is how fucking sexy was it? Z- okay, mm-hmm. so for for hearts, it's like your. Well, no, I mean, it's like how romantic was it? For, we, yeah, I mean, we do like one to five on yeah. both scales. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean. Um, eggplants is a little harder to like one for us. That's what would be, she like, said. One, one would be a Hallmark movie. Five would be five Balesa. is like Balesa. straight erotica, like yeah. just just Balesa reading dot. porn. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Slash plus or whatever. Balesa plus dot co. So, <laughs> sponsor us. Anyhow. Um, <laughs> AdamandEve.com, which I did see uh, the other day. I saw a video from Adam and Eve on BlessaCo.com. Holla. Also, Yarlap. Not sponsored, but sponsor us. Right? Get you Yarlap. Yeah. Um, Urinary incompetent. uh, Incompetent. Nope. Shit. Urinary incontinence. I mean, you can be confident, too. You can be like, I can pee the best. (laughs) My kidneys are the best kidneys in this fucking block. <laughs> Suck it, all yeah. of you and your inferior kidneys. My, 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 it's my, urinary my. incontinence. It's a pelvic floor <laughs> thing. Jesus. It's fucking 11.45. Yeah. Yeah, it is. We it are is. old and it's a Monday. It is um, a Monday. Fuck me, it is Monday. Yep. Uh, okay, anywho... Yarlap, good for uh, you know not peeing yourself and also <laughs> sexual pleasure. <laughs> Yay, pelvic floor! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, Clark Gregory wants to let <laughs> call me on that one because someone's gonna get Yarlap and me. Clark Gregory. <laughs> Anyhow, ah, ah. so first let's do some hearts. So let's hearts for you for this one. Um. Okay. So. I know we we have some um, perhaps like mixed emotions about halves, but I kind of I feel like three and a half to four because the amount of pining that like Anthony feels for Kate mm-hmm. and the the amount of like adoration that Kate ends up feeling for Anthony and like she clearly knows that she's falling in love with him. So goddamn sweet. And, like, yeah. the way that Anthony comes around. And it's so fucking sweet. That scene alone where she's like, even if I can't have him, I'd rather Edwina have oh. him. K- 
killed me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say four, just because. Like, Fair. Yeah. And then she when tells she, she when he tells thinks him, that like she's something happens and he thinks that Kate is like dead. Mm-hmm. And, and it's right he before just that loses is, his fucking mind. That's when he he had just realized that he's in love with her and that he has to tell her. Yeah, and like two pages before then is when she's like, "I'm I I I withdraw my you know like my you know barrier for you your suit for Edwina," and he's like, oh, "I literally just found that I'm in love with you." What? Like, no, 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 no. That was no, they were does. already married. No, they were. Yes, they were. The B, the B. No, 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 no. When? Oh, no, no, no. That's not what places. I'm talking about. No, okay, that's yeah, not yeah. what I'm talking about. That also though. Yeah. fantastic yeah. no after they're married something happens to her where he thinks oh, she's gonna die mm-hmm. the carriage yeah and he is just He's that is crying. the time he is literally crying like this is the moment he just within the last day has realized that he is in love with her i mean it's okay, it's I think, really I think struggling it's okay if we that. spoil a little bit I mean, we're not going to at this point we're almost done but i mean right. I think it's okay if we spoil a little bit because this book has been out for fucking 10 years so i think right. it's okay fair uh, enough yeah but no, I agree completely. I mean, mm-hmm. that fucking part where she's like, she t- she literally tells him, "I'm I'm okay with you courting Edwina," and he's like, "Yeah, oh, uh, because he like actually had just made he had just m- like made um like kind of like it like he was gonna actually thinking I think at this point gonna actually kind of go for Kate at that point." And then she tells him, "Yeah, so you can marry Edwina if you want." Yeah, and he's because like, he's she's finally like. He's not a bad person. Like I, ha- I can't find I want him, but I can't. a reasonable objection mm-hmm. to their union, and I can't put and myself if, in between them. Yeah, and if I tell Edwina that I, I, I love, I, I have I'm that I have feelings for him, him, she will back off. She'll and, bow out, yeah. right? And she and, didn't want that for her sister. No, and then two pages later, and they don't have a choice, so it's great. They don't have a choice, so that works out. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Hit me in the face with some eggplants. Happily. Um, I said... (laughs) Um, I said four. Because here's the thing about historical romances. Is that, like, they're not allowed to touch each other. Yeah. It's the same thing as, like, the hand flex in Pride and Prejudice. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, at one point, Anthony actually says something about how... She was not wearing gloves, but he was. Uh-huh. And he, like, relished the fact that she was not wearing gloves. How about when they're in bed and he's taking her glove off? He takes her rings yep. and he puts them between her breasts. Uh-huh. He takes the rest of the gloves off and then puts her rings back off and then kisses yep. her fingers. Then puts yep. his her, her other hand, her finger in his mouth and sucks it. Uh-huh. I'm going to say three. It's just like... <laughs> <laughs> it's just so sensual like it is. just the the skin to skin contact that we sort of uh take, take for, for granted, granted yeah in the 21st us. century Share you know brain. like it's mm-hmm. same brain but like back then i mean in the 1800s yeah. she should have been wearing gloves like most of her skin should have been covered like the first time he is afraid for her life she is afflicted on like this tiny strip of skin that is yeah. exposed yeah. in her dress. You know, yeah. I mean, and it's extremely modest dress. You know, like there's nothing sexual showing on her. It's no. like a collarbone. And, and she's like, she's like, she keeps showing people. She's like, this isn't my boob. Like, it's not my boob. Bubbies, it's my collarbone. <laughs> yeah, right. Like she's like, she's like, no, seriously, it's just my collarbone or like my chest or like whatever. Yeah. But it's she's, she's like, it's not my bad. boob. And Mrs. Featherington. But he pretty much had his his mouth on your bubbies. Yep. God, Mrs. Featherington, you fucking Ugh. gossip. Yeah, you're. I mean, well, they did her husband dirty in that first movie. Or in the they first really did. Season. I'm they interested did to see how that continues. Dirty on that first season. They, they really, oops, they really did. Yeah. All um, right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, now we move on to stunt casting. Now, did you did stunt stunt casting? I did not because this is this last time. I literally just was like Jonathan Bailey done and uh, all the other people done. So here's the thing about, like, um, the thing about stunt casting at this point is that we know who plays everyone, right? Because yeah. Bridgerton. Um, there will be no one other than Jonathan Bailey. 
No. Right? No. Uh-uh. Like, I can't picture anyone as Anthony other than Jonathan goddamn Bailey. Um, and I I know that there were, like, some people who were annoyed that, um, that Kate's family, like, became an Indian family. Oh, Jesus Christ. They can eat a dick. And exactly. Like, fuck them. I don't fucking care. I, I had no problem with it. Simone Ashley is gorgeous. I and have no problem with it. Much like in season one when people talked about, like... Rajon Page. Rajon Raj- Page being a M- black Lady man. Lady Danbury and the Queen. Lady Danbury. I mean... Who fucking cares? I fully recognize that the story took place in the 1800s and that this was not, this would not have been a thing at that time. However, we are telling this story in the 21st century. And FYI, I'm going to say right now, I had to say one thing for Sanderson. Sanderson does have a black character in it because, hi guys, um, England, England stopped slavery way before we did. It's accurate. Hang on, I want to find a quote. Um, and you know what's now really that funny? you bring that up, well, I'm, as you're looking that up, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a little tirade on um, uh, around the world in 80 days with David Tennant because people had the same thing about around the world with in, in 80 days because like besides the fact that his one of his companions is black and he's French, but I was like. Again, the French treated the black people a lot better than pretty much England or United States. So at that time, they were a lot freer than they are or anywhere. And mm. and then the last episode, um, yeah, second to last episode, I don't remember. Anyhow, um, is it takes place in in the United States. That's like his last leg of the trip. Oh, okay. And it's a Ku Klux Klan member, and it's a black. Um, 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 U.S. Marshal, which I said, well, it's obviously the um, the Rough Riders. That's that's no, sorry, no, um, the Buffalo Soldiers. Buffalo oh, Soldiers okay. was was a group of black um, cavalrymen from the Civil War who went out and anyhow, it wasn't far fetched, but people were pissing and moaning about that fucking too. Just like it's just oh, like people, sake, it's man. just racist fucking people who just bitch right. about anything. Anyhow, that's my. Soapbox, I'm getting off. Fucking move on. Jesus yeah. goddamn. Move on.org. Okay. Dot org. okay. Move on. Moving on.org. Okay. So, um, there's a. This is sort of like a mo- low key throwaway moment or a throwaway like comment, but mm-hmm. I loved it and I highlighted it. Um, after another long silence punctuated only by the tapping of her foot, Kate added, Edwina will be lonely without us. Mary didn't even bother to look at her as she answered. Edwina has a novel to read, the latest by that Austin woman. She won't even notice we're gone. <laughs> yep, yeah. Um, okay, so anyway, Jonathan Bailey, obviously Anthony Bridgerton. Um, cast as Kate Dean Schwarma, right, mm-hmm. is her last name in the show, mm-hmm. uh, is Simone Ashley, who was in, if you watch Sex Education on Netflix, mm-hmm. she played um, one of like the friends in the popular group. And it's such a very different character that she plays that I find it really fascinating. Regardless, doesn't matter. She is fucking gorgeous. Um, Now, the only person that, like, I did according to the quote book Mm -hmm. um, that is different from... I went ahead and just went with, in in terms of Edwina, I just went with the Bridgerton cast because like, I just couldn't find anyone that I really wanted more than the woman that they had cast, which is, uh, Tarithra Chandran. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but she is again, gorgeous. Uh, however, in the book, like if you're following the character description of Kate, she has brown hair and brown eyes. Mm hmm. And lips that are too full. (laughs) Too full. Oh, my God. Right. Jesus, you poor thing. Um, I chose for, like, a book-strict Kate, Anne Hathaway. Because Mm. she's pretty and has full lips, but is not, like, I don't know. She just, she could also be, like, ordinary pretty. Yeah. You know? Agreed. Agreed. Um, but regardless, reading that book, like, I absolutely pictured 
Jonathan Bailey and yeah I mean I and, have to say like um, we fl- we flipped because Duke and I I actually I yeah. had I was the one who cast a completely different person like from the book and so this one I was like no I, I went in reading it like it's, it was hard yeah. for me to di- nah, at this point to differentiate, but yeah, I couldn't think of anyone other than yeah. I mean, now that I think about it, there's one person I probably would have picked for Kate if I was thinking of a white person, a white person, a white um, person. Yeah, but I'm like, it's I, I'd rather it be. At this point, I'm fully happy with I can't with I cannot it fucking being wait. Them. Yeah. Oh, I'm super excited. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what have you been reading other than this? So um, I'm going to recommend um, because I'm a fucking crazy person. I think this is the third time I've recommended it because, you know, why not, not just con- to continue to recommend it um, is um, I'm going to recommend uh, It Happened in Autumn because I confuse this a lot. With, <laughs> I confuse um, the Viscount who loved me with It Happened in Autumn because it's the same sort of setup as these two enemies to lovers sort of bickering although with it happened one autumn uh, it's two american uh heiresses and their wallflowers and it's a group of wallflowers together it's and this lisa, is lisa claypas it is lisa claypas and um something happens pretty sexy where they're like we gotta get married because we maybe just fucked um well, damn yep in a garden but the one i'm going to recommend because i just finished and i love it and i'm trying to think of how to review it because i can't think of anything bad to say about it which is kind of always the rough thing is to marry yeah. or to meddle by martha waters um it is a marriage of convenience historical romance and it's about a uh, a rake slash theater owner who owns this like oh it's not covent gardens it's not you know the glow it's not drury lane so no one will, i mean like, it's it's as he says all the men of the town come, but they bring their mistresses as a kid instead of their wives. So uh, he wants to elevate the status of his theater. And uh, he's been disowned by his father. And so, and, and so to elevate his theater, he marries this woman who is a, um, she's, I forgot what her standing is, but she's a lady. And, uh, but her family is in dire straits. And uh, of course, and so they are marriage of convenience, but holy fuck do they fuck. And um, they <laughs> fuck a lot. And um, she wants to be more involved in the theater. And he wants her to be more of a society woman to like bring the reputation of his theater up. I really enjoyed it. I thought the banner was really good. I thought it just was, it, it, it was, it was, it was delightful. There, I, there Again, there's not much I can say badly about it, but yeah. So Love it. there's it's just the third of the series. I don't know. I didn't. So maybe the bad thing I say is I didn't know if I cared about the friends too much. Who are the second, the first book? I okay. don't know if I go back and read those ones, but I really enjoyed. Okay, this. that's mm-hmm. fair. Yep. All right. Okay, and what are you listening to? Bitch. Hang on, I need to talk about what I'm reading. Um, oh yes, you didn't talk about what you read. God bless me. Usually I don't go first, so that's why I'm like. I know. I will. I just just asked you without any prompting um okay so i the reason we were literally delayed here is that i've been absolutely waiting with bated breath the is this book six i think it's book five book five in greer rivers um conviction series Mm -hmm. and if you go back to episode 13 we reviewed fighting conviction as an arc that was book two in the series Now, we're up to book five a year later um, in, like, real life time, not necessarily in book time. Uh, And this is, I, I'm in a post, I will put my full review up. Um, I need to finish writing it. I will try and finish it tomorrow. It really, so this book, I know, this book releases tomorrow, March 22nd, um, technically in two minutes. Guys, I cannot fucking tell you how much I loved this book. Now, I will say, so in the past, the first four books were, they're romantic suspense books, okay? There is, um, they're really best read in order, although each couple is technically standalone. 
But you should read in order in order to understand the overarching plot line of like justice and what the um, what the characters of the book are of all of the books are fighting for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Greer Rivers is a former attorney. And so the the legal aspects of things are perhaps more accurate, although I don't fucking know. I'm not a lawyer. Regardless. Oh, we should ask Ween to read them. Oh, she fucking should. She Fair absolutely legal. should. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the first four, uh, four books, Romantic Suspense with Adult Themes human trafficking and sexual violence are absolutely major themes throughout Mm -hmm. all of these books. However, this book is the first one that is listed as a dark romance. And I am not fucking kidding you. It is dark. Mm -hmm. I, I was on a plane. I got this ARC the morning I was leaving (laughs) for my work trip. And I was super excited because I downloaded it and I was like, sweet, I can read this on the plane. I read at least half of the book during my flights, okay? (laughs) At one point, I was was on my flight home next to some kid who was fucking listening to music. Of course, we all have masks on, so I can't really see anyone's faces. And it was dark out, and I was just staring out the plane window into nothingness, feeling like that uh, that gif or that meme from like it's always sunny in Philadelphia where Charlie is like motioning with his arms yeah, and like yes. there's that entire thing behind him with like the, the string, red tape and like the, yes. the homeland yeah yes because I was like putting the fucking pieces together and I was A amazed and B enraged Greer Rivers and her fucking plotting is so fucking smart. This woman, I mean, like, the things that she talked about in book one that I barely fucking remembered are relevant in book five. Oh, that's cool. So good. So good. So even though this book, I mean, there were there were two scenes, but one in particular that was fucking brutal, really difficult to get through. Mm-hmm. Protect your hearts, mind your trigger warnings. Um, there were a couple of moments that were really, really difficult for me to read. Mm-hmm. However, I trust Gru Rivers. I really do believe that she's not like putting in gratuitous sexual violence for no fucking reason. Also, it like really puts you in the mindset of God, I hope these people get revenge and I hope it's bloody. <laughs> because that is the mindset that you need to be in to finish this book. Can, can I introduce you to the Oxygen Network? <laughs> <laughs> can I introduce you to a show called Snapped? I mean, listen, not you're yeah. not wrong. Love like, thy neighbor. <laughs> that now the cover of each of the books features a pair of like stilettos, mm-hmm. right? And each color of stilettos is is a different color. So the first one is red. The second one's yellow, I think. Third one is green. The fourth one is purple. This one is orange. Now, this tells the story of Phoenix, which is very... Fire and... Fire and rising from the ashes and whatnot. Um, But in, underneath the heels are always like some sort of hint to the story. And in this one is a pen and a scroll of paper and it is fucking brilliant it is just so like this book just fucking perfect although dark as hell so just is is this the last one no there's one more there's one okay there's one more member of the team Mm. but a lot of like hints that she is discussed in the Mm. plot over the past four books comes to fruition in this book mm. and it ta- it actually takes place it sort of starts at the end of book three in the series mm-hmm. and happens during the course of book four mm. gotcha. gotcha so like there's concurrent timelines but no one no one outside of phoenix and callie would have known what's happening 
mm-hmm. in book four, and no one in book four would have known what's happening with Phoenix and Callie. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Because mm-hmm. they are both imprisoned. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> fucking cool. It's cool. so fucking dark, you guys, but it is also so good. It really gets you bloodthirsty. So. Okay, because that's... Super yes. fucking excited. I mean... If you, if you can look at the two of us and be like, here's me like, I love historical romances. <laughs> and you're like, I love bloodthirsty romances. So I was like, I just be... want revenge on <laughs> rapists. That's yeah, what I was like, like, yeah, there's you. And I was like, I like, <laughs> I like carriages. Yay. Mm-hmm. Don't give a fuck. Let me, let me find in book three, one of my very favorite parts this is a, it's not a huge spoiler, but it was a really fun part. Um, book three, which comes into play again in book five, is that the heroine is fighting back against her abusive fucking fiance. And she ta- she's wearing this pair of heels that, like, she got at a consignment shop. And uh, because, of course, like, he wants her to dress up. And she's like, I want to not get beaten up. So I'm just going to do whatever he says. And so she puts on these heels. And uh, eventually... She stabs him in the neck with her fucking stiletto. Oh, they did that once. It was called Single White Female. <laughs> Don't care. Perfect. I'm just saying. It like, is I'm like, such I'm, a I'm satisfying giving you, I'm giving moment. you more movies to watch. <laughs> Happy to, to put do on your it. Hundred, hundred movies to watch. Well, it'll be a hundred and one. One. Like it is just fuck it, just beautiful, and it comes back into play in book five. Oh my fucking god! Like it just so good. So the last one is the is book six, and it's the final um, member of like their team, their military team, and it's not going to come out until October. Are you going to be able to handle it? No. Okay. I will not. I fucking will not. Now the good news is I have a direct line to Greer at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. I have been waiting for this fucking Tessa Dare book for a good amount of time. Right. Tessa, the good news is fucking I work ha- it. I have Greer's actual email address. <laughs> and I'm in do. two Facebook groups. Yeah, so, you are. like. Because we share an email address, asshole. I know. <laughs> Can't I know. That. You're not an asshole. I'm like, <laughs> and I love you. I love you too. Um, yeah, so. No, because I'm like, knows... I go through. So, here's here's what Ray does every day. If she mm-hmm. checks the email, and I'm like, oh, there's Greer. Okay, hold oh, on. There's um, Greer. I don't, okay, I don't check that. I go to the next one, and I go to the next one. I leave mm-hmm. all the Greer ones for yep. Veronica when she checks the emails. Yep. I love you. I didn't I mean to call you, you an asshole. I just was saying. Oh, that. I don't care. I am kind of an asshole. No, you're um, not at all. I'm just like <laughs> debatable. Regardless, it's highly recommend this entire series. However, please mind your trigger warnings. And and actually, with yeah. this book in particular, Greer has been both in. So I'm like a member of, um, I, her ARC group is like through the podcast. Like I'm a member yeah. through our Facebook, whatever. But like I'm also a member of like um, I don't know fans of Greer, whatever. And so in both of the groups, she has been extremely cautious about saying, like, please mind your trigger warnings. And if you are on the ARC team, but you don't want to review this book because it's going to be too dark for you, that's fine. You can review the next one. Yeah. No, she's been really great about it. Um, The thing is, for me, like, I hang in there because I'm like, I know all these assholes are going to get justice at some point. (laughs) And it feels good. You get justice, really and you get justice, and you, you get, get justice, and you get justice, and you get justice, and you get justice, and you get stabbed in the neck with a stiletto, and that's your form of justice. Steven too. Weber. <laughs> I love that you just perfect. winked at me. I love you. Um, I did. We share a brain. I love um, winking. Anywho. So what, are you, what are you listening to? You know what, though? I've just been listening to Up First, because... Um, I, ne- I want to keep up with what's happening in Ukraine. Oh, yeah. But I can't handle the in-depth stories because it just it's going to put me in a dark place. Yeah. Um, so I've been listening to Up First because it gives me, which is from NPR. Yep. It's like their morning 15-minute podcast of like the headlines. Um, so I've just been listening to that to kind of give me a, like an overview and a, and a quick update as to what's going on over there. Gotcha. What about you? 
Well, two things. So first is I watched. Boobs, um, boobs, and blood. Well, yes. Amazing. Amazing. We are in our middle of our TCM fucking uh, retrospective of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Hello. Um, and this is actually the last episode that I'm actually pretty much going to read for right now. We're going to do, at the end, we're going to do a, um, hey, here's Carol Clover's Men, Women, and Chainsaws. And if, my God, if you haven't read this book, oh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a thesis on uh, gender in, in, in movies, particularly horror movies. But I mean, it's just, it's fantastic. She's so fucking brilliant. Um, uh, but the first part is mostly about um, the final girl. We get into other parts, a couple ch- chapters, and, and we'll come back to it as we go through f- uh, f- uh, franchises. But um, what I wanted, two things I want to talk about is the first is um, real quick. Um, I watched fucking Turning Red. Oh um, my god, we did I, too. It was amazing. I fucking It was loved so it. good. First of all, we laughed our asses off. Well, me and Mr. Veronica laughed our asses off. I, and then, I, I sent it to you and I was like, I don't know, I think this is too old for baby baby Veronica. She watched it with us. Did she? Okay. Yeah, she like, did. Now I she I'm sure most of it went like went over her head. But do you remember you had sent me an article that was like turning red is unapologetically like, like horny. horny, and I was like, actually, kind of fucking is. It kind of is, yeah. yeah. Like when we watched it, I was and like, I was like, yeah, I get, yeah, I get it. I fucking get yeah, it. I get it. Mm-hmm. I loved that movie so much. I loved the music in it. I loved. Yep. And then I watched the documentary about it. And the, oh, I didn't know there was a documentary. Oh, there is. It's amazing because it talks to like the um, the director, and I can't think of her name right now. Who was like, she's like, I'm that 13 year old, like Canadian Japanese girl or Canadian um, Chinese girl. This is me. And um, like, I am uh, May. And I just, I loved every fucking second of that. I mean, I also love fucking like Red Panda. So, I mean, I that's that's part of it. But I think it's amazing. I think if you have a a daughter who's around 12, 13, it's a great movie to watch together. I mean, it really is like, it's a beautiful film and I had I'd seen a few things on TikTok about like Asian families being like this hits too close to home like much like with people did with Encanto and um in yeah. like in um Hispanic communities but oh my god I mean really it was even as like a white person oh. I cr- I started crying I, I know like I had tears in my eyes at one point because when they like all just they, the whole thing all all the ants all the ants yep. and everything Oh my god! In the mom. but more oh. than it, like I'm even getting, just like, having a about it. even having like a daughter, and just knowing that the relationship I have with my daughter and how the relationship I've had with my mother can impact mm-hmm. the relationship I have with my like that is while there are cultural elements for sure. Like I'm not right. trying to downplay. No, no, no. I don't think you. Have, there are I mean, cultural like, elements for sure, but. It, like the core of that, I think that yeah. that is relatable to everyone. It's beautiful. It's a. It's, it it's is. funny. It's really funny. I laughed my ass off a lot during that movie. I laughed. I I literally cried. I cried a lot at like especially like like you said. I am a white person, and I still found the relationship we with May and her mom like especially oh, at the end. God. I. Oh my god! Yeah. I can't. I literally, Girl. I words can't describe. And then, um, and then also, there's like fucking like there's at least one gay character that is like fucking gay. And you're oh like, oh my god, Mr. Veronica was like, I want her to be my friend. <laughs> like, well, just she's so intense. No, I'm talking about the boy. Oh yes, well him. But I'm talking Which, about the, the friend Indian girl. Um, no, she looked. No, all of the girls, all of the girls were straight. Okay, hang on. Supposedly. You mean the little boy? The who little is boy like who, the party he wanted the to party. Yeah. yeah. What a f- fucking Cuz they he they you know by the end of it he has his own he has his own fucking friendship bracelet they made for him. Cuz he's movie, a huge four town or, or oh whatever. My God, this movie guys was amazing. Like it's beautiful too. I mean, it's like gorgeously made. It's yeah, it gorgeous. Is. And they like it. Also, you'll love the documentary because they talk about how they made it during the fucking pandemic. Uh, what they had to okay, do. Yeah, well, like, at least that. one of the women who was one of the um, 
the artistic director was pregnant through most of it. Oh, God. It's just, it's gorgeous, and it's amazing, and it's just, and the um one, the other production, uh, the other artistic, there's like two, there's like a production It's manager. Abby. That's who my husband loved, was Abby. Was it with the flannel? Um, she was, braces. yes, the one with the braces. Like, yeah. she was just so intense, she like screamed every single line. Oh, no, and she's my- the Korean girl. She's the Korean, because, like, I was trying to figure out what... Oh, so there's the white girl, and then there's the Korean girl, because she says, like, I'm Korean! For, like, a bunch of different times. I was like, amazing. <laughs> and then there was the Indian girl who had the who had the Twilight book, like the Twilight-esque oh, book. Oh, yes. Oh, my um, God. Oh, it's so good, guys. It's so good. Oh, it is good. really good. And there were a couple moments when I was like, that sounds like Sandra O. Oh. And then I realized afterwards it was that is yes. Sandra O. Oh. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yep. the, the the voice talent is amazing. I mean, it's just, it's so good. I mean, even the It kids, is extremely the, good. Yeah. I, I was, I was, I, you know, I, I've been very happy with the things they, they, I was so happy that, that they put that on too. I know that, I mean, I understand that like they're upset because they didn't get the money from actually being in the theaters, but I don't know if they actually would get the money from being in the theaters right now. I really I'm don't not sure. So. I don't know how many people are going to theaters. No, I really don't think so. Um, but there's been such a push. I mean, cause it's got like a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes right now. I mean, it's, it's really so good. good. It's you so guys, good. It's so, so good. Yeah. And very funny. Like, as a person who grew up in, like, the boy band era. Oh, because that's the other thing. It's set in 2002. I mean, that's amazing so to me. I yeah. Mean, I mean, I also loved um, Billie Eilish and her brother she wrote Phineas. All the fucking music. They wrote all the music. And actually, Phineas is one of the voices one in of the, Four Town. One of the Four Town? Nice. Mm-hmm. Nice. They're yeah, they're I, extraordinarily talented siblings. It's kind of scary. Yeah, I mean it's it's so good. It's really good. And um, I mean it, again, it's Pix it's Pixar and 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 Disney and Disney. So you yeah, can't, it's you can't. highly recommend. Her. I yeah. highly recommend this movie. Yeah. It's so good. Um, but what the podcast I'm going to recommend is is Mrs. is Veronica sent me a TikTok of this person. Oh no. <laughs> Veronica loves TikToks. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, she sent me a TikTok of this girl, and I can't think of her name right now. Um, I want to say it's Kate. Uh, Kelly. Kelly Reynolds. And it was about... Um, I can't remember, because I watched a whole bunch of her different like TikToks, so I don't remember. But she has a her own podcast, and it is called Boobies and Newbies. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. And I actually, I listened to a couple episodes and I liked it a lot. She's singular. She does her own podcast by herself and she's funny. She's really funny. Her podcast and her TikToks are funny um, and her podcast is funny. So I want to give some shout out to her, um, Kelly there. Um, Yeah. So there you go. Her last episode looks like fortune favors the Duke. So of course I would fucking love it because it's obvious. Obvious. Ave. 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 Maria. Maria. Yep. So what yep. do we have coming up? Mm. Oh, fuck. Um, all right. Know, right. So next week, uh, at the end of this week, March 25th, Bridgerton season two comes out. Of course it We does. are going to be a, just on a marathon of Bridgerton so that we can record hopefully on Monday. <sighs> the episode should come out on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, we are going to do, in April, we have decided that we are doing like new Er author month. Yep. Uh, we're kicking that off with Consider Me from Becca Mack, which is her new um, novel. What was the one that you reviewed prior? Love You Wild. Love You Wild. Okay, so that came out last year. That'll be up on our website. I forget when exactly you reviewed that, but Ray reviewed it. Um, was that her debut novel? I believe so. Okay. So, uh, consider me, it's not in the same series, like it's separate, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. So we'll be doing that. We will also be graced with Becca's presence. We will be. We are going to interview Becca, mm-hmm. um, and that will air on the 5th. Mm-hmm. Now, on the 19th, what are we doing? Um, S.L. Prater. Okay. 
I haven't That's told I her thought. yet, so this would be great. Oh, well. <laughs> this would be a surprise for her. Poor Stephanie. Out. Hi, Stephanie. <laughs> um, so, Esla Prater's um, heist in... Oh, shit. What the fuck is the name of it? Oh, shit. Damn I it. thought it was... Oh, oh heist and yeah. hijinks? No, We're it. the worst. We are the worst. Hold on. Hold yeah. on. Uh, mm. here, I thought on. I had it up, but I guess wait, I don't. Wait. My message is, hold on. Give me I a second. I thought it was called, like, Witch something. It's Heist and Hexes. I was close. I was oh, close. right. Heist and Hexes. Okay. We are doing Heist and Hexes by S.L. Prater. Um, I read her... Um, uh, her um, oh, I, you I read, read um, The Secret Witch of Creekspell. Yep. And then her first book, too. The Wicked Witch of Creekspell? Is that mm. it? Yes. Oh no, that comes in. Hidden. The uh, hidden hidden witch. Oh, okay. Of one of the two. Yeah, they were amazing. She's she's a great author. So Yeah, all excited. of her stuff is pretty new. Like she's come out with multiple books in the last two years. Yeah, I mean she's got five books out, I think. Mm, okay, so I see Warrior whole, Witch. Hang on. Like, the Street Witch has three books in it. Three books in it. Um and the Creek Spiel. Witches has three books in it. Oh, but that one's coming out this summer. Yeah. So it looks like she's in an anthology that's coming out later this year, but it looks like... um, Oh, Street Witch is the entire anthology. So she mm-hmm. has like six books out, it looks. Yep. Yep. Um... But yeah, she's... trying to she's... Like, get some like rep out for like these, these mm-hmm. like, you know, for these authors who are like starting out, so... Yeah smaller authors that yeah. um that show a lot of promise and um put out a good product i already texted ray and said um becca was kind enough to just send us the kindle <laughs> yes <laughs> the kindle copies and so i opened up like my kindle app and i was like oh um consider me is already showing up on my kindle uh many things i like about it one dual perspective B, first word is fuck. Yep. I'm on board. Yep. <clears throat> I am on board. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, April will be, I'm A really excited month. for April because, it, yeah, like I love talking about new authors, um, promoting, promoting their stuff. I think it's, I find it to be, like, I'm really honored to be able to. To do that, I feel when like I look back at they've this trusted year, us with things. Yeah, I, I mean, I look back at our year. I mean, we have had so many authors who have approached us and said, "Hey, would you read our stuff?" Yeah. I mean, Tracy Brogan, Lucy Monroe. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I um, Emma Emma Jackson. Emma, God, Jack, fucking Emma, Jackson. Emma Jackson. We love you so goddamn uh, much. Did you see that she got a copy of Book Lovers? I know. I was like, damn oh, it, man, woman, so said it to us. Jealous. I know. Just, just <sighs> send it to us. Don't tell anybody. Just I know. To I told her I was like the most jealous. She oh. told us that we would love it. I know. Just come on, Emma. Just send it to us. Just you send know it you love over. us a little bit. Just send it. Uh, stay side. Oh my god. Okay. So if we get it, we should have Emma on. We could talk about it. I will die. Yeah, but oh yes, god. absolutely. Emma, it comes out May third, I believe. <gasps> we haven't we haven't thought about it May yet, have we? The only thing we have for May is book lovers. So we were anticipating doing that on May 13th because we didn't get approved for an ARC, I assume. Like, we wouldn't... We have not gotten word that we were approved for an ARC. So we oh, were planning yeah. on just buying it on the 3rd and reading it for the 17th. Yeah. Well, I mean, we might have Emma on for that. Oh, let's... Ta- well, we should let's, ask let's, her. We, we, we should know. ask her. I mean, look, yeah. we're just doing this on the fly. You can cut this out if you want. We're awesome. Yeah, we're going to um, cut this out. <laughs> Yeah, we we are a very professional organization. Uh, anywho, that's what's basically coming up. I'm pretty excited for April has sort of like accidentally become newer author month, which I'm not sorry it. about. No, yeah, I, love I think it. it's I think it's great. I'm more I would than like happy to, do to continue more that of moving this, forward. Actually, honestly, like I would like to do because I think because I think everybody does the big things, and I would like to do these yeah. smaller ones. And I'm like, I mean, I. I as you know, and I'm sure you, you do the same. I know you do the same. It's like we read these arcs that are like, yeah, this is fucking amazing. How does no yeah. one know of this book or this author? And mm-hmm. it's because they're overshadowed by maybe something that's not as great. And you're like, right. Or, you know, they don't cool. have like the publicity or whatever. Like they're just overshadowed by whatever. And this is, you know, the romance genre is massive. 
and and uh, some for, things don't. I, I'm going to be honest. Some things aren't like do not deserve. Yeah, I mean, listen, like there are some that are high, really hyped up on book talk that I'm like, this book was terrible. The stopover. I mean, I, I'm I'm holding mip, mip, my tongue right now because there's like tongue? at least three or four. You're gonna like bite right it here. Yep. Just bite that tongue. Yep. Yep. Um. <clears throat> so anywho, um, that's pretty much where we're at. And then at some point, we really do want to do a penny read month, but we have not decided yet when that's going to be. We're looking at July, but we don't know. Yeah, but we also have an ARC in July already. So we'd have to do like an extra oh. one. Because we have circling back to you. We could do my birthday. <sighs> Although tomorrow is Vanessa or Vanessa, my God, my brain, my Veronica's <laughs> birthday. Jesus Christ, my brain was like, Vanessa, where the fuck was that coming from? Veronica's birthday. Starts with a V. No. I think it was thinking <laughs> Vanessa and Aiden. Maybe. No, I was thinking yeah, so tomorrow is Veronica's birthday, guys. Yeah, that it is. Actually it's now. Cause it's post <laughs> Yeah, because it's like half hour after. Yeah. Fuck. We should really go to bed. We're the worst. Yeah, I know. All right, guys. Um, okay. So here's where you can find us. You can yeah. find us in all these fucking places. Um, you can find <laughs> us on um, so our <laughs> Chicklet Book Club Podcast dot com. Mm-hmm. Our Twitter is at Chicklet Podcast. Pod, blah, 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 chicklet Podcast. <laughs> our TikTok is Chicklet Book Club. Our Pinterest is Chicklet Book Club Podcast. Our email is Chicklet Book Club Podcast at gmail com. Instagram is Chicklet Book Club Podcast. Our YouTube is well, our fucking YouTube, it's Facebook there. fucking YouTube, and mm-hmm. Patreon. Again, guys, I mean, we're just, we're not begging we need to put up at our, all, because it's fine. We can, we can do this, but at the same time, it'd be amazing. Level. What? <laughs> what, Vanessa? <laughs> <laughs> we need to put up our levels, which corresponds with our merch. Yeah, which will be on our website soon, which mm-hmm. our website is, is updated. Hello. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I feel like we did it, right? We talked about the Viscount who loves me, um, loved me. You should a thousand percent read that book and then watch Bridgerton with us. So please join us next week when we talk about Bridgerton season two. Right. Hopefully where we discuss at length Jonathan Bailey and his His, body. His, um, appropriately hairy chest. I'm really looking forward to it. Hey, Only Vanessa in Carlton. part because that means I get to see you two weeks in a row. <laughs> Vanessa Carlton? Vanessa me. Carlton, how do we end? <laughs> in the most obnoxious way possible. Please buy our sticker that says that. Please buy our sticker. Um, okay. <gasps> Bye! Bye! Bye. <laughs> Cut out. Out. Okay. Zoom. You seem to fuck off.